The so-called Hebrew Israelites make this argument that in the Bible, Israelites are called Greeks and Gentiles, and this is simply not correct. But one of the primary arguments they look at is from 1 Maccabees chapter 6, and this is during the... And they also, and they also of Judah, go ahead, if they abide not still in... Un so the speaker here takes the title Bishop, his name is apparently Nathaniel, and he doesn't know scripture very well for being a bishop. Um, of course, his whole theology is just completely distorted and not reflective of what the Bible teaches. And here he is trying to suggest that the Gentiles who are grafted in apparently are actually Israelites, which is not the flow of the text at all. It is an unfortunate reality that in the world we live, there is racism. And racist groups attempt to manipulate the Bible to say that only people of a certain skin color can be saved. You have people who are white supremacists and try to say only white people can be saved. You have movements like the Hebrew Israelite movement who try to say only people of darker skin colors can be saved. Neither one of these are true. And we can go in and deconstruct each one of these arguments on both sides but here today, what I want to do is just look at a few passages that demonstrate that salvation is available to everyone. some kind of understanding you know during this chat yeah and uh you know figure out what what it is that that our heavenly father wants in this world you know that's the most important thing absolutely so what is y'all's background like religiously like i know obviously i have a basic idea but i don't know any of the specifics of that kind of i know there's different groups and stuff All right. well you know we don't per se uh believe in a religion Right. Because, you know, uh, the Heavenly Father, uh, based off of the Bible. Right. He never gave a religion. Right. He gave a heritage. Right. As a matter of fact, I got a, a quick precept I want to throw out there, if you don't mind. Oh. Uh, let me see. Where to go? Where to go? I just had it. <sighs> Where did it go? It's funny. I was actually just going over it today. Um, matter of fact, and do you do you deal with the uh, apocrypha? I'm just curious. I mean, I'm familiar with it. I've read it. Um, I don't believe it's inspired, but I do believe it's of value. Mm-hmm. What is what does that mean, if you don't mind me asking? Sure. Um, basically, that you know, the Bible as we have it to do. So, I've, you know, Catholics, uh, Eastern Orthodox, they're going to be they're going to be of the position that it is inspired. I take the Protestant view um, that it's not in that God, it's not God breathed. You know, Paul at Second uh, Timothy three sixteen, he says all Scripture is God breathed. And, and so it would not fall in the class of things that God 
established as his word. Now it has value, for example, historically, uh, Maccabees, as an example, has a lot of historical information in it. Um, I would say as well, Josephus has a lot of value. Philo has a lot of value. Um, but I wouldn't consider either one of those scripture either. Would you put oh. would you put their works over the Bible? Oh no, absolutely not. The Bible takes precedence. Okay. <clears throat> right. So that's that's what I'm asking, right? So um historically speaking, the events in Maccabees, you agree take place, right? Um, to the best of my knowledge, yeah. I mean I haven't okay. gone through it exhaustively, but okay. um I, I don't have, you know, off the top of my head, I don't have a reason to dismiss any of the historical events or anything in there. And, and just so I'm clear, when you say inspired by God, what, what do you mean by that? That God through the Holy Spirit or through direct transmission or whatever the vision, various means gave people the words, thoughts, ideas that he wanted to be communicated, those individuals wrote them down and they were then transmitted to us today and accepted by uh, believers as a whole today. Obviously there's gonna be some divergence and you know, is this book inspired or that book inspired? Like even Catholics and Orthodox who accept the the Apocrypha have a little variance and in, in, I forget which one, but in, in what they actually accept. But by and large, it's the transmission of it and the, the, the acceptance of the community that these are the works of God. Who, who would you say canonizes your, your, your biblical lens? So historically speaking, we understand there's 77, 80 books. And then over time, the Protestant church um, cut, cut 14 books out, right, to give you 66. So I guess my question would be, from your point of view, because we know that there's um, the, the, the text and the actual manuscripts are somewhat dated and autographed. How, how do you, as a believer, right, um, canonize your belief, if, if that makes sense? What, what makes you reject the Apocrypha as the, the quote unquote gospel versus the whole, the, well, we would, we would subscribe to the 80 books from our point of view. Mm -hmm. um, well, as Paul tells us in Romans chapter three, that the, the oracles of God were entrusted to the Jews. And if we look, the evidence shows that the Jews did not um, accept this, the, the, mm larger canon as the the scripture even jerome um uh, in translating the vulgate i know he references the fact you know doubt around about the larger canon because at even in his day the jews did not accept that as a larger canon so given so given that entrusting that's that's good so 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 would you say that jesus christ um identify with the um what you would say the apocrypha um he's it's certainly alluded to but uh i i don't believe he ever quotes it as scripture um, but he quotes you know, it right uses, Meaning, paul uses so what i'm the saying is he as well i got you so right right so so they they would quote the apocrypha mm -hmm. and i and forgive me because i'm coming in the house right now so just give me one second but um Paul and Jesus Christ, they would they would even quote scriptures in the in this the quote unquote the apocrypha. So my question is, um even when you go into the idea of Hanukkah, right, or the feast of dedication, mm -hmm. what do you learn about that that historic event? Oh yeah, in, in the apocrypha, absolutely. Um right. and, and it has okay. value, it has historic value. Um I absolutely affirm that, and I fully affirm that it is both quoted and alluded to in the New Testament. Um, at the same time, Paul, as an example, also quotes 
other sources as well. And so I, I would be very hesitant to say just because a source is quoted that we need to put too much weight into it. Um, as an example, Jude even quoting the book of Enoch. Um, I, I don't know if you've ever read first, second, third Enoch, but um, there's some really wild stuff in there. Some very interesting stuff in there. But I'll yeah, that, that, that's Ken. That's kindling in in a uh, trash. <laughs> <laughs> but there's still there there there, there may be underlying um, inspired text within as the basis for the Book of Enoch. But it but when it comes to the canonization, if God intended something to be part of the canon. Um, the expectation too is then his own preservation of his word, which clearly did not happen with the book of Enoch. Uh, there's, you know, there's other books even referenced throughout, uh, what is it? First, second Kings or first, second Chronicles or both that, that existed, right? There's these other books um, where stuff was recorded, but those things weren't preserved for us for today. So if those things were inspired, um, inspiration itself isn't the, only determining factor for for canon so if paul wrote another epistle to pick your church that doesn't make it canon there's there you know there's there's a a um more than one criteria i would say that is necessary for the establishment of of canon right right now it's funny that you bring up church now, of course, you know, you know, there's the, um, there's the worldwide Christian theory that the churches are the physical churches that are being talked about, right? <clears throat> Is that what you believe that when Paul writes his epistles, which are letters, right? You know, epistle just means letters mm -hmm. that they are directed to a physical building uh you know in philadelphia and you know galatia you know and all the uh different churches that are referenced in his uh epistles is that what you believe uh no i don't think at that point in time that there were physical buildings um you, you know typically the early disciple, you know, the earliest disciples would tend to just meet um, both in homes and in the synagogues. And then as things progressed, homes became, you know, a more prominent part of early believers. But in general, I would identify this as the small C Catholic, as in meaning universal church. So uh, the body of believers who lived in those communities. So when he wrote to the, you know, wrote Colossians, he was addressing the body of believers who lived in, in Colossae. He wasn't, you know, go take it to, you know, 1415 Fifth Street, Colossae, <laughs> something right. like that. It right, was, right. you know. So let me, let me throw this precept at you and I want, I want to, <laughs> I want to get your take on it. Um, this is uh, the book of Acts. We're going to go with verse uh, chapter seven and verse 38. It says, this is he. I'll, I'll wait for you to get to it. I appreciate that. Yeah. Seven thirty-eight. All right. Right. It says, this is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in Mount Sinai and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. I would mm -hmm. love for you to break that down for me. Sure. Well, we have to think about the word that's translated their church in Greek. It's ecclesia, and it just means assembly or gathering, and it can refer to any such gathering together it's not referring to a specific building it's just it's what i would call contextually relative so what and there we go uh, a gathering of citizens called out from their homes the assembly of israelites uh gathering a, or throng of men assembled by chance there you go uh, you just said it you just said a gathering of who 
or throng of men assembled by chance. No, no, no. before uh, that, a gathering. Oh, the assembly of the Israelites. Israel. Yeah. Right. So that's the church that's being described in the epistles of Paul. But you know, we can mm. further go into that. But that, no, no, we can't. That's that would be. Uh, I really would recommend. There's a book by D. A. Carson called Exegetical Fallacies, and he talks about language and how we can't just pick whatever definition we want where and apply it wherever we want to use it uh, terms have meaning words have meanings they have ranges of meanings and those ranges of meanings are determined based upon how they are used absolutely i i totally agree so, so we with that ahead. being said sorry about that with that being said also if you look at all of paul's writing especially in the beginning of all of his writings Right. Let's let's go to Romans one for an example. Right. He says exactly who he's talking about in every single one of his epistles. He, he literally does. Right. Let's go to uh, verse seven. Um, you know, you can see you can see it. Right. Romans one seven. Right. Where it says to all that be in Rome. Beloved of God called to be saints mm -hmm. now who were the people that were called to be saints well do you know what saints means before absolutely we... what's up well let's go let's go to the let's go to the definition so we both can see at the same time called to be saints who are the saints strong's g40 hagias hagias right the blue letter just gives the most holy thing a saint, right? Mm -hmm. Someone who's sacred, pure, morally blameless, religious, ceremonially consecrated. That's an interesting word, right? Who was consecrated in the eyes of the Lord? Well, I, I, I know where you're going with this. You're going to go into the Old Testament and show where Israel is called saints. Mm -hmm. The problem you'll run into is that the term is a generic term, and even angels are called hagias, saints, holy. And, and this is the same term even for the Holy Spirit, hagias pneuma, uh, is, is the term used for Holy Spirit. So it's a generic descriptor of anyone who fits the criteria. It doesn't right. just because a person in one place is called a saint doesn't mean that that's a universal application. We have to look again at the context and say, who is Paul talking to? So it, it, it's, but you're you're begging the question. You're begging the question of is this is he talking only to Israelites? When as we go into the book, we find he he's talking to Jews and Gentiles, that is, people who are not Israel. But now here's where the problem is going to run into you every time, is that the Jews were only one tribe of the entire 12 tribes of Israel, right? And even if you wanted to add the Jews as Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, right? Those are still three tribes. We still have 10 other tribes to worry about. That's not by the first century. And you can look this up basically in any Bible dictionary by the first century. The, the terms were conflated. They no longer distinguish that. And we even see Paul um, uses the terms interchangeably in Romans chapter 11, where he's referring to Israel. And he says that Israel might be jealous. And then like two verses later, he flips it and the Jews, he talked about the Jews being jealous, but he's talking about the same thing. But but like I said, you can look in any Bible dictionary and it'll affirm this. And I've checked numerous ones and they all say the same thing, that by the first century, there was no longer a distinction in that term because everybody had essentially integrated together. So how do you deal with Romans 9 then? Because Romans 9, he's very clear who he's talking about, he's very clear who he talks about the promises are with, the mm -hmm. covenants, right? Mm -hmm. The giving of the law, 
right? The giving of the law wasn't given to everybody. It was only given to one select people, right? He talks about, uh, um, I think I already said the covenants, the old and the new covenant. Mm-hmm. He talks about, um, as a matter of fact, let's just go there. Me too. Let's just go there. I keep forgetting you're going to pull it up on screen. I don't need to. But... Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you want to, sh- you're on the computer, right? If you need to share I anything, can, just am, let me know. I can just throw it up there. Oh, no. Yeah, and I can see your screen. I just have okay. it. Okay, so we'll start at Roman 9.1. It mm-hmm. says, I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. Right? My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continued sorrow in my heart. For I wish that myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, right? Mm-hmm. Not everybody. To whom pertaineth the adoption, that's the adoption of sons, that's referenced in uh, Galatians, that's referenced in many other chapters, and the glory and the covenants, as both old and new, and the giving of the law, you can go to Psalms 147 for that, and the service of God and the promises. Everything was given to the Israelites, whose mm-hmm. are the fathers and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, right? Christ only came for the Israelites. And that can be double referenced in Matthew 15, 24. Well, okay. And, and, and I agree with everything here. You know, the, all these things were given, were promised to the Israelites. But why why is Paul wishing he was accursed for his breath his brethren, these ones? It's well, because-, because because of his love for Christ, right? His love for Christ. He wished that Christ wasn't the one that had to deal with it. He wished he was the one that had to deal with it to save the pain, the torture, right? The humiliation that his savior, our savior, had to deal with you know, in the streets, right? He's Carrying a cross and, and being whipped and scourged. And I mean, how, how, how would you explain that? Well, he says, for I wish that my, I wish that myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Paul is grieving his, the, the, the nation of Israel because they have by and large rejected the Messiah. Um, I, I don't know if it's, if it's maybe the wording in the King James, let me actually, let me, let me flip over to it here. You but, want me to pull up a, a different translation? I've got the, the ESV right here. He says, uh, for I would, I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Mm. So, so he's wishing that. And he's saying, you know, yes, all these things were given to them. They're theirs but they have rejected Christ. And so when we get to verse six, he says, not all who are born of Israel are Israel. So just because you're born of Israel, that alone doesn't make you Israel. And so he proceeds then to make an argument about election, about how Isaac was a child of the promise, not of flesh. And he goes on, he proceeds to go on and it extend, this argument really extends all the way through chapter 11, where he talks about the grafting. And he talks about how the, how the wild branches are grafted into the root and the natural branches, those who don't believe, not all the natural branches, but how they are lopped off. Now, they can be grafted back in if they were, come to belief, but they are lopped off. And so... It is this grafting in that actually makes them part, become part of Israel. And so, yeah, starting right there in verse 13. Um, So now here's the thing is another thing. What's the definition of Gentiles? Well, Salaki, hey, can y'all repeat that last 30 seconds? I'm over here just getting, like I said, I'm getting these children together, but I'm trying to follow along. Dave, David, um, can you repeat what you just said? As far as um, the last, um, I would say 30 seconds about uh, not all Israel is of Israel. That's mm-hmm. what I got, the last bit of it. And then um, I'm going to go on mute, but I just want to make sure I'm catching up on, on what, what's being discussed. Yeah. 
so so yeah so that's romans 9 6 where, where paul's making an argument about election and saying that not just because you are born of israel that doesn't actually make you israel and and so it is it is the children and then he talks about isaac being called his seed and, and so the, Isaac was a child of promise. He didn't just come about by all natural means, but there was, there was divine um, election involved and divine activity in him even having life, essentially. And so he proceeds to make a, this extended argument about election that it really extends throughout Romans 9, we go, you know, the, the argument even carries forward into chapter 10 and really wraps up in chapter 11, where he's talking about the, the, the vine and he's talking about there being nat, uh, natural branches. And some of those natural branches get lopped off because of their unbelief. That is, they're no longer part of Israel. At the same time, there are wild branches, he says, and he says, these are the Gentiles. And they are grafted in. So you have two groups. You have Israel and you have Gentiles. And these are the two groups that are being contrasted with each other. This is not me saying it. It's, it's actually in the text. There's, there's two groups that are spoken of. And, and, and they're side by side. Gentiles are wild. Israel is natural. And, and being grafted in, they become part of Israel. interesting so you said the next so, so like can we could we go there could we could we go there um because i'm just uh, trying to figure point, out Romans 9 11 or, or well i'm just trying to go i'm just trying to figure out where we get the idea that and and let me make sure i'm hearing you right are you saying that natural gentiles right heathen or you would say non-israelites can be grafted in and become israelites is that what you're saying Yes. Yeah, so if we look um, okay. as an example in, in verse 11 of Romans, Romans 11, 11, it sa he says, so I ask, did they stumble? And they refers to Israel back up in verse seven, because he, he says, what then Israel failed to obtain what it is seeking. The elect obtained it, but the rest were hardened. And then he quotes two, two scriptures. So he says, so I asked, did they stumble? Israel stumble in order that they might fall by no means rather through their trespass salvation has come to the Gentiles so as to make them that is Israel jealous now if their trespass mean riches to the world and if their failure means riches for the Gentiles how much more will their full inclusion mean and then he goes on to say um, about the 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 branches but if some of the branches were broken off and you, he's talking to the Gents, he says in verse 13, now I'm speaking to you Gentiles. So you, although a wild olive shoot were grafted in among the others and now share in the nourishing root of the olive, olive tree, do not be arrogant toward the branches. If you are, remember, it is not you who support the root, but the root supports you. In other words, they're grafted into Israel. Israel is what's supporting them the Gentiles aren't supporting Israel. That is true. They were broken off because of their unbelief, but you stand fast through faith. So do not become proud, but fear for if God did not spare the natural branches, neither will he spare you. So a big warning there. Okay. So, so I got a follow up question on that. So are Israelites also called Gentiles? The term Gentile, the translation Gentile. No. Not when it's so. Let me ask you a question. What? What? So. So you said Israelites were never called Gentiles. Not no. They are spoken of as being as Gentiles in Maccabees. I know, but but no. The term Gentile is a technical term that refers to those who are not Israelites. Now the the Greek the underlying Greek word is ethnos, and it is used both in a technical sense of gentiles and it's used just in the generic sense of nation or nations okay let me ask you a question now has israelites ever been called ethnos oh yeah ethnos? absolutely they're a nation so of course so okay so and that that word gentile can be translated to ethnos correct um it is the word but it, like if it's in the plural it's going to refer to a plurality so 
not one nation. Like in here, of course, he's contrasting them with Israel. So we have Israel on one hand and there's my hand on the screen and Gentiles on the other. We have them side by side. So we know they're not the same group because they're both being spoken of in the same sentence. All right. So so I got a question. I got a follow up question with that and I'm going to get it back to Ephraim. Um, all right. So when you said Romans 11, 11, right, I say then have they stumbled that they should fall. God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation is come to the Gentiles. Um, David, what is what is salvation? I think that's what I kind of want to get to. And then I think that'll help smooth this conversation um, out a little bit. Yeah, th there's various salvation, right? There's there is uh, temporal salvation. For example, the apostles were expecting in Acts one, they were expecting the restoration of the physical kingdom on earth, right? You know, like when's it happening? He, then he's Wait, like, but doesn't it say the res? Does it say the physical kingdom of Israel? Well, he, he says. Let, let me just flip to it real quick. Uh, it's it says. Because I mean, at this point in time, they there's still a lot of stuff they don't know. So there's so just wait a minute, of, wait a minute. So you're saying this is after the Great Commission, and they don't think that the kingdom of Israel was going to be restored. They 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 didn't know that. No, no, this is no, no. They they they, they they're they're asking when. They're they're right. thinking it's about to happen. So they say, the, Lord, the, will you at this? What, what time, verse are you at? Acts one and what? At one verse six. One verse six. Okay will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? So he's thinking, they're thinking about like immediate deliverance from the Roman empire. So, okay, cool. So, so, and these, and, and these are who you would say are the disciples, the apostles, the students of Christ, correct? Yes. But I want to okay. be clear. That was only half my answer. So I just don't want you to think. Okay. That's but, but my point is, my point is even after the so-called great commission, they're still asking for the restoration for the kingdom of Israel. Why would they be asking Christ about the kingdom of Israel being restored if they understand the Great Commission is to go into all nations and preach the gospel? Well, that, that actually comes of three verses later, though. Okay. And so, so, so what's what, what you got? What's up? So he says, but you will receive power when so so it's a, it's a there's a, some variation obviously between Matthew and, and Luke, but Luke gives some different things that Jesus says than what Matthew says, and he says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you'll be my Wait, witnesses. Where, where, where are you at? What's, what scripture are you Acts at right now? Acts one and eight. Acts one and eight. Okay, go yeah. ahead. And you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the end of the earth. Okay. So at this point, he's telling him, you're, you got a big ministry ahead of you. You've got work to do. And, and that's to teach the restoration of the kingdom of Israel, correct? That's their, their ministry was, was about salvation from sin. That's what they were preaching, okay. repentance so let me, from sin. Okay. okay, so let me read verse 6 again. It says, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again? the kingdom of Israel. So they're talking about restoring again, the kingdom of all 12 tribes. Mm -hmm. You agree with that? Yes. Okay. Verse seven. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons, which the father hath put in his own power. I'm reading the KJV, by the way. That's fine. <clears throat> all right. So Christ never says at this point in verse eight or verse seven, it's for all people. He's, he's, he's confirming, right? It is not for you to know the time or of the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that of the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Are we still talking about the restoration of the kingdom of Israel from verse 6? He, he Jesus just said he, Jesus just says you will be witness his, his witnesses they will mm -hmm. testify about what Jesus did when we look at the the testimony that they gave their testimony wasn't uh, going out there about the restoration of the kingdom their testimony was of, I mean not to say they don't talk about the end ever coming obviously they do but their focus was on people putting their faith in Christ and turning to him in belief which is what we see 
throughout the book of Acts. That's the message that's being preached. Right. But but what I'm saying is right here in these two verses, six through eight, mm -hmm. the subject matter is the restoration of the kingdom of Israel. Correct. Um, well, no, I think verse verse eight, I think he answers them in verse seven and saying you you don't get to know what 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 is going to happen in the future, the times of the seasons that the father has put in his authority. But you will receive power. You don't get to know this, but what is going to happen is this thing. And you're so going to does come, me. So Christ so Christ does does acknowledge that we're still talking about the restoration of, of the kingdom Israel. of Israel. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's the absolutely concept. going to That's happen. the subject. That's what we're trying to say. There's a subject that he's talking about. They're talking about, like me and you were talking about, the restoration of the kingdom of Israel. It sounds like you're trying to not acknowledge the fact that they're talking about the restoration of the kingdom of Israel. They're all talking about the same thing. It doesn't, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what Christ is saying as far as you don't get to know when these things happen. We agree. We don't know when the restoration of the kingdom of Israel is going to happen. My whole point is I'm just trying to have us on the same page that the kingdom of Israel will be restored, correct? Yes, absolutely. Okay, cool. That's all I want to ask. I'm, okay. I'm going to let you take it, uh, uh, Ephraim. Okay. So I, I just wanted to um, bring him to this one precept because he had mentioned that, you know, that the Israelites were never called Gentiles. So here's uh, 1 Corinthians 12 and 2. It says, ye know that ye were Gentiles. Mm -hmm. carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Right? Mm -hmm. So if the Gentiles are Gentiles, why is he recalling them Gentiles again, if they're already Gentile? He doesn't have to re... He doesn't have to say that you were Gentiles. So what this is talking about, this is talking about Israel. Because Israel didn't know that they were Israelites. Right. So they followed all the idols. They followed the Christmas. They followed Halloween. <clears throat> they felt, <coughs> ooh, excuse me. They followed all the customs of the heathens. So in turn, they weren't Israelites anymore. They were Gentiles, just like the other nation. <coughs> so I, I, I don't agree that these would be Israelites. I think if, I think if we set the stage for what's being talked about here, going back into Romans 10, 18 to 20, well, it was, yeah, we see two things happen. OK, well, hold on. Let me ask you this one quick question. So can a Moabite turn into a Jew? Uh, that was the understanding at the time. Yes. But, but if you look in Josephus, that he he affirms that Edomites became Jews. And well, that was, probably, that was probably because they were forced to be Jews. But here's the thing is that a Mo if you look in Deuteronomy, it also says that the Moabites and the Ammonites will never enter into the congregation of God. So how can the Moabites and the Ammonites therefore become Jews? It's not possible. They, they cease to identify with their their former people. So if we look at the example of Ruth, who was a Moabite, she says, your people will become my people and she your God, my yes. God. So, so they abandon their former identification completely, which is what happens and what Josephus talks about with the Edomites that, that occurred. Um, he says that they are hereafter considered to be Jews. Yes, they were forced, but they submitted they said, they said, if you want to live here, you're going to do this. And so they submitted, they lived as Jews, and they were considered to be Jews. So you're saying that it's uh, that I can just go ahead tomorrow and just believe that I'm Chinese? Well, no, because we have to understand the, how the terms were being used. Like even Paul will use Jewish, like why, why does he flip back and forth between Israel and Jewish? One is a, a yes, national say, origin. Yes, I don't believe, sorry, I don't, I don't believe that he says anything about Jewish. I think he, I think he probably mentioned something one time or, or another talking about Jewish fables. And, and that's another story. But um, there's only two nations inside the nation of Israel, right? And that's the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. So, that's so like... 
Hey, Salaki, hey, Ethan, can I say something real quick? I don't, I don't want to interrupt, but I just got to bring this out real quick, right? So dealing with the scripture that he just brought out in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, so you claim that this isn't talking about, when it says Gentiles, this is not talking about Israelites, right? Correct. Okay, so let's finish reading on um, to the next verse. So it says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto dumb idols, right? Mm -hmm. So if these were already Gentiles, which already serve idols and already have their own pagan gods, why would it be saying carried away unto dumb idols? When the Israelites in their own commandments, the Lord told them, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Mm -hmm. Right. So let me bring the scripture out real quick. Right. Let me bring this out real quick. Right. I'm going to go to the book of Psalms and I'm going to go to let me get this real quick. Right. Bear with me. Let me get this in the book of song. Right. So it's like you need 106. Con. Con, I got you. Con. Con. You want song 106 and 5? I got 35 too. I think you need uh, 35 to 37. Is that where it say the, uh, the, the guys of the, the guys other uh, nations are idols. Yeah, yeah. This is um. I think this is what you want. Let me know if this is what you want. Psalm one hundred six thirty five. It says. So like, no. so like, I, I got it. It's ninety six and five. Okay. So this okay. is the book of Psalm chapter ninety six and verse five. It says, "For all the gods of the nations, and the nations is talking about all the nations that's not Israelites, right?" Mm -hmm. It says, for all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens, right? So the Lord is telling you that all the gods of the other nations are idols, right? False gods, right? Graven images, right? Yep. So in, in First Corinthians, what Ephraim just brought out, right, that has to be talking about Israelites when it says Gentiles, because the the Gentiles that you're talking about, the other nations, their gods are already idols. So why would it say be carried away into dumb idols if your God is already an idol? Exactly. Right. So and let me hold on. Let's right and let, let's finish this to the uh, next verse too. Right. Let me go to the next verse. It says, verse three. It says, "Wherefore I give you to understand." That no man speaking, where you, where you at, Ephraim? Yeah, go back to that uh, uh, Corinthians. It's a lot, yeah. I'll get it right now. Right there. All right, let me go back to verse two. It says, ye know that ye were Gentiles. And like he brought out, if I'm already another nation, how could I be another nation before? That I mean, that right there don't make sense to begin with. Right. It so, says carried away unto dumb idols, even as ye were led. Right. So that's clearly telling you that these so-called Gentiles are the Israelites that were uh, carried away into worshiping the other gods of the different nations. Right. So a, a couple of things is, is first. Whoever is being discussed here regardless, has been taught this since birth, since childhood. Because he's talking, Paul is talking to specific people. He says, ye know that ye were Gentiles. So he's talking to them. They've been taught their whole life that up until a certain point, obviously, follow these false gods. And 
so the, so whether they are what it, whatever their nationality is in that regard doesn't matter because everybody who false follows a false god has been led carried away by these these dumb idols. No, no, no. What, you don't understand. Hold on, hold on, Ephraim. What you're not understanding is the other nations don't have to be carried away into dumb idols. They already worship idols. But we're not right? talking about nations. We're talking That's about That's what it means. It says Gentiles. It's plural. It's talking about other nations. But he's saying, ye know, you know. Paul's writing to, to people... To believers in Corinth. No, that's and not who. That's right. where we disagree, Dave. Right. That's what we're saying. Like you know, when we when we opened up saying the word church, um, you forgot the word synagogue was in the word church as well. So when you understand what a synagogue is, uh, all nations, like Ephraim was saying earlier, another nation couldn't come into the congregation, which would be the church. So to say all nations, right? Even Colo this is First Corinthians one and two unto the church of God, which is at Corinth. So you had you had small synagogues of a gathering of Jews of Israelites. When you go into that definition church, it literally says a gathering of Israelites, which you would call a synagogue. This is a church or a synagogue in Corinth because the Israelites were scattered amongst Greek providences, right? Greek Greek um, isles, right? It says to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. When you go to Psalm fifty and five. It tells you that the saints are the ones who made a sacrifice with God by sacrifice, right? So these are two accounts or key words that indicate that Paul's letters or these Pauline epistles were written to so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans or Israelites that were scattered amongst in, in Greece, right? And just to hammer it home, I just want to get this in Psalm 106 and 35 because like the brothers are telling each other. They're trying to tell you, you can't be carried into a Gentile, well, you can't be a Moabite be car being carried away to an idol, right? The Moabite god of Chemosh and, 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 and be carried away into captivity doing that. That's their god. That's why the scriptures tell us that the Most High, right, who you would call God, only, only was dealing with the Israelites in the Old Testament. So I just wanted to get this out real quick. This is Psalm 106 and 35. It says, I'm going to start at 34. It says, they did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them. So this Hebraic word for nations would be goy, right? Which is the equivalent to Gentile in the, in the English language, right? It says, so the context of this, this scripture is about the, the Gentiles, it says, but were mingled among the heathen Gentiles and learned their works and they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. Right. So it talks about the Israelites literally um, worshiping other gods. Right. You see that in Ezekiel 23. Right. You see that all through the scriptures where the Israelites being carried away into Babylon, Assyria, Persia, they were forced to worship the gods. And even in the Greek, um, the Greek times, you even had um, Israelites calling themselves Greeks and being referred to as Gentiles. Gentiles is not a monopoly on all nations. All nations can be Gentiles. Right. And then to top to just add on to that, if you go to Genesis 10, 5. Right. It talks about the sons of Japheth and it talks about the sons of Ham. Right. It says that by these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands. Right. So Ham um, and his brother Japheth right here. Right. They were already classified as Gentiles. But Shem wasn't. That's interesting, right? So Gentiles is everybody else that God isn't dealing with. And God is only dealing with his chosen people. And his chosen people are the nation of Israel. So, so the difficulty you're going to have is right. that e e even when Israelites are scattered among the nations, they are still Israelites among the Gentiles. And so even Paul, when he's talking in chapter 12, he's, he's addressing 
every every single person who worships a false god didn't magically have be born and believe in this god every single person was taught to follow their god and so paul is speaking to specific people he's not saying they or them he's saying you you individually or you you people i'm writing to who were Gentiles, were the believers of like the, the, the nations and, and were of the nations, you did these things. And when we go back into chapter 10, because 10 gives us more context, we know still he's, he's distinguishing because he says in verse 18, consider the people of Israel are not those who eat the sacrifices, participants in the altar. What do I imply then? The food offer that food offered to idols is anything, or that an idol is anything. I'm no. sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. Are you in Romans 10? No, I'm in First Corinthians 10. So I'm trying Corinthians. to stay in the same vicinity of the text in question, but I also have another verse I want to go to in Ephesians. But, but we were in Corinthians 12. We didn't even touch on 10. Well, right, but 10 leads up to 12. Like when they're reading the 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 the, the, the letter, they're gonna read 12 and the thoughts are rather 10 and the thoughts in 10 set the stage for what's to come well then if hey, that's david, the case, then you uh, might have quick, to go to 10 quick, quick quick real quick david i got a question so so first corinthians 10 is this about fools being sacrificed to idols uh it, well and idolatry in general but yes okay so if if a so did the most high give a commandment to the moabite Edomite or just any other non-israelite nation did he give them an, an a, a commandment to not eat food sacrifice to idols he the commandments were given to the nation of israel but not mm -hmm. only for the nation of israel they were given to for israel and for anyone who wanted to join israel okay so so again my question is did the most high god can you show us in the scripture where the most high god showed another nation they cannot eat food sacrificed to idols and can somebody get me psalm 147 no, it would only. Be, I I know what Psalm one forty seven says. No, he. It was only the nation as it, Israel was the only nation once they existed that he mm -hmm. engaged with. Okay, I, so I, I so my question him. is, why would Paul in First Corinthians speak about being food sacrificed to idols to a people that never got this commandment? Because Paul has gone out and preached the gospel to all people everywhere. Right, but my question is not about the gospel, right? Because we have two different definitions of the gospel. My question is, why is Paul talking about being food, having food sacrificed to idols to a people that never got this commandment from God? Because Paul has preached to them the God of Israel and the Messiah, and these are people who had been led astray by, by these false religions where they worship these idols. Paul mm -hmm. has taught them and corrected them and said, no, they're not anything. They're not real. And that's why he's having this whole conversation here about it. Whoever he's talking to, even if he's talking to Israelites, just hypothetically, let's say he is, he's, they still, if, if they were, if they were following false gods, they had to be taught Right. I No, I agree. I agree. And this is why the book of Maccabees, right, is so important because you actually see Israelites literally calling themselves Gentiles and eating food sacrificed to idols um, and then also even worshiping idols and, and be, becoming Greeks, literally not circumcising their children. They were forbade to do so. So they were our still point Israelites, of view, though. there were still Israelites. I agree. But just like when the scripture says, I will no longer call them a nation, which that is of a nation. He's talking about the northern king of Israelite. So they were no longer called Israelites, right? So even when you go into the northern king, that's some background noise, hold on. He doesn't say they won't be called Israelites anymore. So they won't be they would no longer be called a nation, right? So No, it said they would no longer be called a nation. Israel is a nation. You agree with that, right? Yes. Okay, so if I'm no longer being called a nation then I'm no longer called an Israelite. That's what it means to no longer be called a nation. So when you go down, right, to be flesh, right? Because when you went to Roman, I mean, you went to 1 Corinthians 10, 18. It says, behold, Israel, after the flesh, are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar. 
What say I then that the idol is anything or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? That's a question. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye, sh that ye should have fellowship with devils. All right. So this is all going in. Right. Even when you go down to verse 23, all things are lawful for me. We're talking about the law. And you're saying that these other nations, right? Again, Psalm 147, 19, the Most High never gave the law to the other nations. He gave the law to the Israelites. And if that other nation happens to be in the land of Israel, they have to be under the Israelite and they have to be under the law of the land of Israel. But the Most High never gave a heathen the law, right? We give the law to the heathen. The Most High is not dealing with the heathen. So verse right. 23, it says, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient, right? So again, we're talking about Paul's ministry, right, was to either Greek-speaking Jews, right, or, or Israelites or Jews that did not know that they were Israelites. So you're looking at guys like these guys on this panel here. We didn't grow up knowing that we were the actual children of Israel until a certain time and date. So these pray. laws... You can't well, prove, well, let me ask, well, hold on, hold on, you're, 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 David, David, part. right, David, and, and you can ask us that, right, but I'll ask you about proving, do you go to synagogues and ask rabbis to prove that they're Israelites? No, I don't care. Why? Well, so, so you only care if so-called <laughs> black people call themselves Israelites, but you no. don't care if so-called white people call themselves the Jews of the Bible. Why no, is that? No, I don't care who calls themselves. I don't care. If so why people. are you asking us to prove it? But you've never asked the so-called no, no, white no. Jew if they're an Israelite. Why is that? No, no, no. I, I you misunderstood, and my timing was off in my question. My, my, you my asked, hold on, David. You asked us to prove that. We, you said you can't prove that. Statement. I guarantee. I guarantee you've never walked to any synagogue and asked a so-called rabbinic Jew that if if they're an Israelite. You no, don't. No. You don't ask them that. My time, no, my timing was bad in the question. You had asked, you'd said two statements back to back. The first, right, thing, and 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 again, your your initial reaction was to have us prove, and you literally took the bait, right? And you said no, you can't prove that. Not, no, what and I was and my question to you, because here's how, I'm gonna just make sure I'm clean when I say this, David. I want to make sure I'm clean when I say this. We come across guys like you all the time, and they want to discredit our claim to being the true Jews of the Bible and the true Israelites, but they've never gone to any Hasidic Jew, rabbinic Jew, or any type of Sephardic Jew, or any type of sect of Judaism and ask them to prove that they are in fact the true Jews of the Bible. And my question is, why is that? Okay. You've never asked a so-called white man who claims to be Jewish that they can't prove that he's a Jew. Can I, can I respond, please? Yeah, please. Okay. First of all, I absolutely affirm that there were Jews who migrated into Africa and there were black Jews. I do not dispute that for one second. Second, you had made two statements back to back. And so by the time my words prove it or whatever I said came out, the timing made it seem like I was asking about the second statement. I was actually asking about the first statement where you said that Gentiles, whatever, I forget your exact verbiage at this point, but you said- I said that, I said that the guys on this panel here- Before that. Are, are, are before Israelites that. from either Northern Kingdom and or Southern Kingdom. And then you said, well, you can't prove that. And I'm asking, why aren't you asking? Because cause do, do you agree that Christ was a melanated uh, person? I think he was Middle Eastern. Middle Eastern. Okay, that's a direction. I'm talking about his, his skin tone. We don't. We're, we don't. We're not told his skin tone in the Bible. That's we're not. Okay. Okay. We'll, okay. we'll 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 make we'll make a mark of that. Okay. What about Moses? Can, can, was can Moses I, can I was so was hold on was Moses you know, you, you, was you, Moses you were, was Moses melanated? Because my question is, what what about the so-called Africans that Christ hid amongst, and the and how how is it that someone like Moses can be amongst Africans if if they're not from the same uh, skin tone and phenotype. If you're talking about Egyptians, there are Egyptian art from the 
14th century, 16th century BCE that show a variety of skin colors in the art. So that I, 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 I so you're saying, it, are you saying the, that the Canaanites or the Cushites were not so-called black people? I'm not, I'm not. Because you know, the Egyptians are, are the Cushites, correct? And the Ethiopians, correct? I understand. I, I've heard that claim. Yes. I'm, I'm okay. Aware. So because they go back to Mizraim, right? Okay. Who goes but, back to Ham. So you, my question you, is, hold on, my hold on. My question is, because you you said Middle Eastern as if that's a skin color or a phenotype. That's literally a direction, Middle Eastern. There's no nation nation called Middle Eastern. That's a that's a what, what what people like you like to do is you make that claim to not make Jesus a so-called black man, and that's fine. But but our question is, how is it that the Israelites, right? And, and all of the people in that area, what we would call the Levant, mm -hmm. how is it that they all look the same, had the same hair type, the same skin tone, and all of a sudden when it comes to the Israelites or the Jews, right, that it's a different story when it comes to what we claim to be? There, there were all different skin tones in the region, so I, I don't, don't agree with that. That's what I'm saying, David. Well, there I were don't Scythians agree with that. in the region. Scythians were white. No, no. What, what do you mean Scythians were white? Scythians are, are who's, from who's, southern no Russia. One's, no They're one's white, white people. David, David, no one's white though. So why are you saying white? We have we have we have um um Scythian mummies even today. Okay, and is their skin on the mummy corpse? Yeah, and their, their hair, they have long red hair. But okay, so so black people can have red hair too. Hey, that doesn't so called so called I thought mummies were wrapped up. They right, but but my but my point is so-called dark skinned people have red hair as well. So to say their hair was red does not make them white. Okay, so so red straight hair is dark skinned. No, I'm 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 but you know you made a claim. You said that the people because they had red hair were red were, were hair. white. Long red yeah. straight hair. Again, again, if I look at an East Indian. He has black straight hair, but he's he's okay. not white. Well, they're, they're, they were from the southern Russian region. They're well known. We have lots of art depicting how they looked. And they also had migrated south into that region for hundreds of years by the time Jesus had, had come around. They were a very nomadic people. Um, so lucky. Like uh, I came in a little late. Like, what, what is the topic for the night? Like what? Are, what are we going we, into? We just we just talking. I mean, you know, it's not necessarily a topic. We just kind of just talking a little bit about salvation, a little bit about um, yeah, the Gentiles. I guess who the Gentiles, and I guess it's it's now turned into how can <laughs> black people prove that they're Jews? But the that white was man not my question. To. I was not asking you to prove you guys are Jews. You that said was. no. You said you can't prove. You made a claim. No, you said we not can't about prove that. that. Not about that. That wasn't what my statement oh. was in reference to. It was oh. in reference to the thing you had said right before that, which was that the Gentiles in the Bible were Jews or Israelites. That's the Gentiles. What, yeah, okay. So again, again, when we go to First Corinthians and our 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 statement, right? When you go to any of the Pauline letters, he'll use words like the elect. He'll use the word like church, or he'll say the word as saints. We go through the scriptures. We just showed you, in a few verses where it, only Israelites were called saints, right? That's only Israelites were in, okay, okay, cool. So what we can show you again is only Israelites <clears throat> were called saints. Can Daniel you show us Daniel 3 and 9? Okay, so you're going to show us what an nation in Daniel? Heaven. An angel from okay, heaven. No, I'm uh, David, David, I'm talking about what nation of people. An angel is not a nation. I'm asking you, sir, what nation of people besides Israel was ever called saints? Are all be all believers are saints, right? No, all no, Christ no, no, sir, sir, sir. No, no. Again, I'm asking what nation of people because I have texts that says Israelites were called saints. So I need yes. you to show me a nation, Moab. Uh, Edom. I don't affirm uh, that whole nation. I don't well, look, block it. Let me let me throw this in here I, real I, quick. Hold on, real quick. I, I don't affirm that a whole nation 
was called saints. What I affirm okay, is that the were. term is applied on an individual level. It can be used of all the people of Israel, yes, but it can also be used on an individual level as with an angel or with individuals who have been sanctified. If you okay. are sanctified, you are holy. But not David, everybody David, was sanctified. But look at, look, at Rome, look I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Salaki, real quick. So this Romans 10 and 1, uh, Salaki, uh, 1 Corinthians 10 and 1 has been up here for about 10 minutes now, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. if you go to the first verse of 1 Corinthians 10 and 1, it says, Moreover, brethren, mm -hmm. I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and passed through the sea. Now, you would have to show in 1 Corinthians 10 and 10 period that Paul is talking to anybody other than the Israelites who were under the cloud, right? And at night it turned into a blaze of fire and they also passed through the Red Sea. You would have to show that in 1 Corinthians 10. Can and I go I into nine? Can. I can show you in nine. Well, uh, but I said 10. You wanted well, 10. You went specifically to 10 and 8 or 10 and 9 and 10 and 10 to show hmm. us something else that has nothing to do with anybody else other than the Israelites. And okay. even in nine, that's a horrible case because that's Paul is literally talking to the Israelite. He says it in the first five verses. You talk about context, but that's exactly the context of both of those chapters. Well, it's nobody on. else but Israel. No, no, so so nine, nine and ten. It's one book. These chapter divisions were added hundreds and hundreds of years later. We, First are, we divisions, understand that. So 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 to say, I can't go into nine. That's a, that's still this. It's establishing the context. What it, who when we go into nine five, for example, it says, "Do we not have the right to take along a believing wife?" Verse twelve. Nevertheless, we have made use of this right, but we endure anything rather than the obstacles put in the way of the gospel of Christ. When Paul is talking, and this happens also in the book of Acts when Paul is talking, and I can show you the same thing too. Depending mm -hmm. on who is around and who he's with, he will be with non-Israelites, like Roman leaders, and mm -hmm. he will say our. What he's talking about here when he says our fathers he's not talking about these gentile believers it's the same our the r is the same as the we in chapter nine which is paul and barnabas so when you go to second corinthians or sorry, second timothy sorry chapter one where he's he's writing to timothy timothy's mother was a jew his father was a greek so he was not Considered an Israelite by birth. No, David. David, what's a David? What is a Greek? Right. What Greek. nation? What nation right. is a Greek? The Greek Greek was used to describe those who were non-Israelites. No, there wait, is, no, no, yes. no, David, David. What I'm asking? That's not the question. I'm asking what mm -hmm. nation of people were Greeks? Greek people? No, no. Okay, what do they go back to? That's what I'm asking you. Who, who were the Greeks? What does it matter? They weren't Israelites. Because okay, let me ask hey, you a question. Look, look. Who hey, are hey, who hey, are hey, the well, Americans? Um, hey, well, Americans quick, wow. is a is a mixed group for people that have immigrated okay. from all over. So aren't the Greeks the same thing as the Americans? When we talk about colloquially speaking, we're talking about a citizenship, not a nation of but, people. But Paul is using colloquial speak, where in because Jewish writings. Greeks are expressly distinguished from Jews. But you, so, again, again, you don't understand what we're talking about. So when right. we say, when we go into the Apocrypha, right, and we became Greeks, it's almost what as if what that? we're saying, okay, somebody get that for me. And, and, it says and became Maccabees. as them. Right. So that's what we're saying. They became that's... as the Greeks doing as what the Greeks do, which is why we went to Psalm 106. But it's where it as, talks about yeah. us being carried away into dumb idols and being as the heathen. So as. Greek is the same. Again, that's that's what we're saying. It's actually making our point. When you become as the Greek, just like when you become a Roman, there's no nation of Rome. It's just a bunch of people, like a, a hegemony, right? Just like America. There's You can't be an American as a nation, right? As a nationality. 
It's a nation filled with other ethnicities. That's the same thing as Greece, and that's the same thing as Rome. So when 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 Timothy's father was a Greek, he had a Greek mindset. He was a Greek citizen because the only way Timothy can be an Israelite is through the seed of his father. So Greek, so him being a Greek is not saying he's just uh, an Edomite or a Moabite. No, that's a citizenship of, like you said earlier, a bunch of nations into Which one. That's wrong. So no, there's, no, there's, no, no. Maybe, the history again. No, this is why you language. have a Hellenized again, David. This is why you have a Hellenization States period. What no. happened during the Hellenization period? They went and conquered different nations. This mm -hmm. is why Alexander had Egypt. Did he not have Egypt? And that's the term for a Hellenized Jew in Greek. Okay, is, is, so now you oh, get what we're saying. Time. Well, no, no, no. So you're wrong. No, though. because I mean, okay, so think about this. Again, on, again, what we're saying, on. David. Oh, oh, David, I just want to make sure I'm clear. I just want to make sure I'm clear. Okay. The 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 the, the landmass of Egypt; those Egyptians became Greeks, correct? Um, I'm trying to think of them. I can't recall off the top of my head. Was Cleo, was Cleopatra an Egyptian or a Greek? I believe she was a Greek. She was a Greek, right? From the lineage of Ptolemy, correct? You're asking, I don't recall. Yes, uh, okay, so, area, so okay, okay, cool. So, so she was a Greek, but she had the customs of an Egyptian, even though she was not a bloodline Egyptian, she was a Greek. Okay. It's the same thing. So just like Alexander, right? And just like America today will go and conquer lands. And just like Puerto Rico is a, is a territory of what? America. You okay. see, so, so you see how America conquers and makes those people, quote unquote, citizens. That's the same thing, right? That we're saying here. I'm gonna yield right there. I'm gonna let. I know somebody else wanted to get in on well, that. Hold, hold on, the hold on. So, so th there are there's three Greek words, but two really involved here. The two Greek words involved are Hellenistes, which is a Hellenized Jew, and Helen, which just means a Helen or Greek. Tim Timothy's father is ca not called Hellenistes, which is a Hellenized Jew. That term appears in Roman Acts chapter 9. He's called a Greek. And then when we go to at 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3, Paul affirms the differentiation. I thank God whom I serve, as did not our ancestors, my ancestors. But then he gets to verse 8, the testimony the about the right our Lord. Who, who are Paul's ancestors? That just proves the point. No, he's Paul is an Timothy. Israelite. Hold on. Paul is an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. So mm -hmm. if his if he's talking about his ancestors, he's talking about his Benjamite ancestors. Then he ain't why, talking about nobody else. <laughs> then why aren't they Timothy's? Why doesn't he say our ancestors like in verse 8 where he says our Lord? He says my ancestors. And the reason is, is because Timothy is not a native Israelite. He is his father is Greek, not not Hellenized, but Helen, no, not Hellenistes. The reason but Helen. why the reason why he's not describing it is because he's writing a letter to Timothy. Then why doesn't he not say "my Lord" in verse eight versus "our Lord" in verse eight? He say, has no problem saying "our" in verse even in verse two. He says Christ Jesus, our Lord. But then he gets to verse three my ancestors so so david are israelites called hellenistic they're called hellenistes which is the term okay. used in acts chapter 9 okay so can somebody get john 7 and 35 real quick let's look at it i know exactly which one you're going to and what's the greek word for gentiles there Ethnos, but it's the d dispersion. Wait, you said among. it's you said it's ethnos. Yeah, it's the disper. Or no, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm I may be wrong. Hold on, it might be. Let's Helen. check it. No, it's Helen. It's Helen. Not. I'm going for no, 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 no. Let's just check it. All right. All right. Uh, so yeah, Strong's G sixteen seventy two, Helen. 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 So are are Israelites are Israelites called Helen right here? No, it's the dispersion among the Greeks. So, so who the were the dispersed? Who were the dispersed among the Greeks? That are these the, that are these are these other nations dispersed among the other nations? 
No, he's saying he is not intending to go to the dispersion, that is, the the Israelites who are dispersed among the Greeks and teach the Greeks. Is he so he's asking they're asking, is he going to the dispersion and is he going to teach the Greeks? What is he doing? What's this guy doing? The, so the, let, let, let me read it. It says, then, then said the Jews among themselves, whether will he go, that he that we shall not find him. Talking about Christ. Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? Our question is, from our point of view, we believe that the Israelites were dispersed mm -hmm. among the Gentiles. Yep. So, so those Gentiles, right, those are Israelites being called Helene, right? So, so no. you, you, what you're saying is these Gentile, the dispersed, these are, these are, these are dispersed Gentiles, non-Israelites being dispersed among non-Israelites. That, that doesn't make sense. No, they no, they're Israelites being dispersed among non-Israelites. That's why even James 1, 1 says the 12 tribes who are scattered about, they're not Gentiles that are scattered about. They're the 12 tribes of Israel. There is well, so, okay, okay cool. So okay, so perfect. So John 7 35 is saying these are Israelites being dispersed amongst yes. non-Israelites. The, so yes, these, the dispersion. So these these Israelites that are dispersed are called Helene. No. These are these are Israelites. They're not called these they're, are, they're called the dispersion. So so who who was the dispersion amongst the other nations? So you have the dispersion. You have like if I take a, a, a cup of sand. Or a cup, wow. and, and I dump it in a cup of water. I have sand among water, but it's that's still a sand. that's a false equivalency though, because you're having sand and water. What we're seeing is two different words. We're seeing the same word Gentiles, but the context is telling me that Christ is because Christ said, "I'm only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel." So He's going to the dispersed, right? Israelites were dispersed. Among the other nations, were they not? That's the, the. This is not about what he's actually going to do. They're saying he's saying he's going to go somewhere, and they're like, "Where is he going? Where Where is but he going?" David, that we can't again, find him? David. My point is, these are Israelites being called Helene, and you said Israelites were not called Helene. They're so who are these called? So, who, so again, so who was the dispersion? Okay, so who were the dispersed among the Gentiles? Okay, what does it mean to be for one to be among another? What does that mean? So you have, you have, again, you have Israelites like in America, mm -hmm. these guys here on the panel, we're Israelites dispersed among the Gentiles. <clears throat> okay. So you are the dispersed, you're not the Gentiles, then you're the Israelites. We are the, among dis them. We, are dis we are the dispersed among the Gentiles among, and yes. teach the Gentiles. We so even if you get Gentiles, it in the NLT, we right? were even Gentiles if carried into the dumb idols. If you were not, if you were, if you are an Israelite, then you weren't always an Israelite. You were never a Gentile. But again, but again, that's what I'm saying. Being a Gentile is is basically saying I am an American, right? And when I found mm -hmm. out, right, just like these brothers on here, we found out we were Israelites. Yeah, we 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 identify as American citizens, but our nationality goes back to the to the children of Israel. That's what we're saying. But then you're not a Gentile, and that's the even in this text. I was, I was a, I was a Gentile because again, I thought as an American, I celebrated Christmas, I okay. celebrated New Year's and Thanksgiving and birthdays and all these different things. Smoked weed, committed adultery, just as the behavior. Gentiles did. That's behavior. I, that's not. I, that's what we're saying, origin. and that, and that's why First Corinthians ten says how you were once Gentiles. It, it, but when carried we away unto dumb idols because I was a Gentile, carried away unto dumb idols because I but, did not keep the law. But we go back into chapter 10, which is still the same context, talking about idols, and, and Gentiles are non Israelites. They are hey, so lucky. Hey, Kat, can I bring go ahead? Hey, can, can I bring this out real quick? Because for some reason, he just don't understand that the Israelites were called Gentiles for some reason. So this is the book of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 11. It says, wherefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh mm -hmm. who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. So it says that ye being in times past Gentiles, how can I be a 
if if I'm a Gentile already, how can I used to be a Gentile? Well, notice how it does says that make, Gentiles. How does in that the make? Flesh. No, you're not answering my question. You're not answering the question. I'm, 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 how can I be? If I'm a Gentile already, mm -hmm. how can I used to be a Gentile? I, well, the text answers that for us if we keep reading. But let's dissect it down, starting. No, in that uh, no. Before you get key, how if I'm a Gentile, how can I used to be one? Does that make sense? If I'm already, if I'm already a Gentile, you always how be a Gentile, I used to right? Be one? I, yeah, I, if, I, if I once a Gentile, to... always a Gentile. That's what that's what we're saying. Why are we yeah, going from being a Gentile true. to not being? Because okay. we've already we've already discussed that, and Paul makes the same point here. We've already talked about the wild branches being grafted in to be okay. being become, and that's what oh, Paul child. talks about. He says, "Remember, so who is the, one, um, Hold on, you ahead, were Gentiles." Ahead. In so the flesh. What, so this what is you're the not right. So what you're not getting is like they were trying to explain to you earlier. If I'm another nation, how can I used to be another nation? If I'm Chinese, how can I used to be uh, Japanese? Right. That don't make sense. Because you became so, you, so basically, no, you basically, basically, you're saying that I can change my bloodline and my race. That's basically what you're saying. Well, well no, I'm saying God can. And that's what so, happens. Wow. Be, be, wow. Matthew chapter three, wow. verse David, wait, David, you're saying that God can. So you're saying that God changed your blood type. Not physically, when you be, no. Spiritually. So, so you're talking about no, spiritually, but but we're saying we don't see anything spiritual about this. Well, this goes back to the grafting in Romans chapter 11. But Paul brings it out in verse 13. Says, uh, why would you need to be spiritually Paul, changed? Let me ask you a question. Why would you need to be spiritually changed? Can't you just stay being an Edomite? Damn. Wow. Who so says I'm saying, an Edomite? Hey, he's saying, a okay, Chinese okay, man no, could be a no, no, prove I'm an Edomite. Well, no, okay, okay. Let me, let me, let me not, let me make exceptions. No, 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 I'm no, just no, saying, you said it. let's deal. I'm with saying, it. no, I'm saying, what I'm saying is, my point is, why do because you, you, you're trying to divert my point. My point is. If you're saying that you're spiritually changed, why do you have to be spiritually changed? To what nation are you spiritually changed to? And why do you have to be spiritually changed to that nation? Because that is the root. That is the foundation. Just like in Romans chapter 9, verse 4, where it talks about all of that. Absolutely. That is where, who God is. So Romans 9 and 4 is going to tell me how David is changed and why David is changing his no, no, spiritual you, blood into what nation are you spiritually changed to? No, Ephesians tells us that in Romans Ephesians, 11 tells us that. Wait, wait, wait a but minute. I don't see anything being changed spiritually in, well, in, in how, none of these chapters. How, so like, how, who was the book of Ephesians written to? Yeah, I already gave him that. It, it, that. That don't make sense. So if I'm, let me ask you that. Who was the book of Ephesians written to? Primarily Gentiles. What kind of so uh there's only gentile. one kind of gentile. Gentile means gentile. You want me to read that? Right. So let me let me let me bring this out because he don't know who the book of Ephesians was written. I, I, I know got, you're gonna I talk one, about one. saints, and that's taking things out of it. You don't understand the meaning of the word oh, hagias. David, David. No, it's the term is hagias. So David it is a generic term that describes anyone who has been sanctified. Where do you and get yes, that? What, what, scripture, is, what scripture says that? What scripture right. says Where's anyone has been David? sanctified? You got to show uh, that in the scripture. And what does sanctification mean? Sanctification is God's process of cleansing us and making us clean. Okay. Where, where do you, where do you where get that from? Right. Where in the scriptures did God cleanse any other nation and, and, and called them saints? Yeah, well, he didn't do it to whole nations. He do it, does it to individuals. Okay, well, individual. Show me an individual from another nation in the Bible mm. that was called That's a, a saint. Question. Well, That's I, a good I'm question. I, well, angels are called saints for one. That's so. a, no, no, we're talking about people, people, nations of people, not angels. You keep going to the angels <laughs> because we believe that the Israelites are also angels. So mm. that's a that's a that's a nice try, but they would also right. be saints because. And, Angels sanctification from heaven are Israelites. Ain't, look, Wait, angels, yeah, that's hold a, on. That's, angels just means messenger. That's all it's it means. From heaven, not, it, just, not it means angels. messenger. Yeah, so if you right. Go to right. So eight and ten, it says I exactly who sanctified. Moses I'm, sanctified them by blood, and it ain't everybody. It's not the Moabite, right? Yeah. It's not the Ammonite. It's not the Edomite. It's not the uh, Jebusite. It's not the Hittite. Well, Hold on, I, I want to go and show him exactly who the saints are. Even though the the captain already brought it out, 
where it said that there's the children of Israel. But let me go back and, and uh, to another scripture in Psalms, right? And, and Dave, I just want you to answer this question for me, all right? So I'm going to go to the book of Psalms, chapter 50. All right? <clears throat> so this is the book of Psalms, chapter 50 and verse 5, right? Mm-hmm. It says, gather my saints together unto me. Mm-hmm. So it's going to tell you exactly who the saints are. It says, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So in order to be a saint, according to the Bible, you have to make a covenant with God by sacrifice. That's it's a nation of people. Yeah. It's a nation of people that made a covenant with God by sacrifice. Everybody didn't make a covenant with God. What nation of people made a covenant with God by sacrifice? Can you answer that question? Yes. Yeah, so only in Israel as a nation, but if a stranger Thank wanted you. to. Thank you. Hold on. Hold no, on. That, no, 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 no. We don't no. get to do that. We don't do that. We don't do that. Hold on. We don't cut me off halfway through my sentence. That you already answered the question. Oh, but no, you, I'm not going to do this. The question. We can end it now oh, or you can let, let him, me finish let my finish. sentence. Hey, Yashua, let him finish. Let him finish. Go ahead. It is Israel is the only one as a nation who did it, but individuals could join the nation of Israel and participate in offering sacrifices as well. Where is that? Can you at? Show a precept that says that? Absolutely. Numbers right. chapter 15, starting right. in one and two, and then verses 14 through 16. All right. Numbers 15 and one. I got you. Numbers 15. We're going to see another nation being able Making to do what again? No, not Making nation. A other people who are not as no, Okay. This is this is, oh, go ahead. Hold on. Let's, let's, let's do one thing at a time. Let's do numbers 15 and one. And I'm reading down to what verse? Well, I just we're just seeing who's being talked to here. That's all my point is in one and two. Numbers one, num numbers 15 and one. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When you be come into the land of your habitations, which I give unto you. Okay. And now let's go to 14 through 16. Wait, why did I hold on? Why did so I we, read those two verses? Because when it says you, we have to know who you is referencing. You is referencing. The children of Israel or the people. Okay, of so now I'm going to what chapter now? Numbers right what? here. For just verses he's, 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 he's trying to go on the strangers. Just just go ahead and let them go ahead with it. Numbers what now? Uh, 14, verse 14. 14 through 16. Numbers numbers 14. Numbers chapter 14. No, 15, 14 through 16. Just oh, verse. numbers chapter 15, 14 through 16. And if a stranger shall join with you, or whosoever be among you in your generations and will offer an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord as ye do, so he shall do. Verse 15, one ordinance shall be both for you of the congregation. Let me read that part again. One ordinance shall be both for you of the congregation and also for the stranger that sojourneth with you an ordinance forever in your generations as ye are. So shall the stranger be before the Lord. One law and one manner shall be for you and for the stranger that sojourneth with you. Is that it? You want me to read on? That was, I mean, you can, but there's no reason to. That was the thing. Okay, Any, can I start at verse 13? Can, can I start at 13? Yeah. I noticed you, you missed that part, right? Oh. So, and all that are born of the country, all right, shall do these things after this manner in, in offering an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. Okay, I just want to make sure that we got that part. So sure. go ahead, David, you got the floor. So who who is a so, a strange stranger sojourn who sojourns with Israel? That is somebody, Are you asking us that? No, I'm well, I I'm I, I I'm I'll I'll answer the question myself. Um and we have examples as in 2 Samuel chapter 1 verse 13 were the son of a sojourner who is an Amalekite. That would be one. Um, we also know in Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 21, that the Israelites could, could give things that died naturally to sojourners in their towns. Obviously, the Israelites, they could not eat it. So these, when it's a, a sojourner <clears throat> or a stranger to Israel, 
It's referring okay. to someone who is not an Israelite. Okay, mm -hmm. even if you want to go in that mind state, where in those verses that you pull say anything about a covenant being made, like it said in the book of Psalms, the saints mm -hmm. are those that made a covenant with God by sacrifice. Where's the covenant being made at? Well, is is that not part of the covenant? Is where that, does is it say the covenant was covenant? being made at? No. Where does it say the covenant was being made at in those verses that you brought out? It's not. The covenant already exists. Just because you made a sacrifice, does that... <laughs> Where hey, does nah, it say that hey, he? Hey, 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 go ahead, real, go real, ahead. Real quick, real quick. This is what he did. <laughs> what is what he did, right? He he mixed up what the Most High made a covenant and only a covenant with the children of Israel, right? And that and that stands forever, right? Mm -hmm. No heathen nation has ever gotten a covenant agreement with the Most High, okay? Yep. The heathens only get an agreement with the children of Israel. That's a two different things, sir. Wow. No, they join. They join no, with Israel it, in the covenant. Yeah, and they yeah, no, no. Listen, no. You can. The heathens can only make an agreement with the children of Israel, never with the Most High. Yeah, that's a difference. Okay. Wow. The heat. No, you mean it. Meaning this right here, right? The children Notice. of Israel have a certain. Listen, the children of Israel have a certain authority and power within the earth. Do you agree with that? A certain authority, and a certain power and authority under heaven, right? In rulership and in power. If the children of Israel never fell, they would be on top of uh, the world ruling class. Can you agree with that? Yes or no? Yeah. All right. Cool. So. With that being said, there is a ruling class that will be reestablished in the kingdom of heaven. So that with that being said, you will not have a uh, you. You're not going to be able to go to uh, who you would say Jesus Christ. Right. You will be going as a heathen to an Israelite to for an agreement with an Israelite, not with Jesus Christ. Do you understand? That's a difference. No, in verse 15, it says, you and the sojourner shall yes. be alike before the Lord. Okay, yeah, hold, hold that's on. not a covenant, though. That is not a right. covenant. There, we're, we're no different before him. Okay, if we're no listen, different so, before him. Uh, okay, so what you're doing is, is you're taking away from the Most High saying he declared the end from the beginning. That is a promise that the children of Israel would have. You just agreed with that, right? Mm -hmm. There is going to be a reestablishing of the kingdom. You went to the book of Acts chapter one, right? You'll fall all over your sword with that. You already, you went, you, you tried to go through several different scriptures, all in the New Testament, right? Which will show, which will further disprove you. The brothers are slow walking you thoroughly, but yet and still you're going here to try to show that the heathens have a, a covenant agreement with the heavenly father which is nowhere listed in scripture whatsoever. And you can only make an agreement with the children of Israel. That's it. And that's if you're doing what the children of Israel tell you to do, because the children of Israel are being total authority. That's all through the Bible. But hey, Salaki King, let me throw this in also. You looking at the word stranger, right? Did you know that the word stranger is, there's two words for the word stranger? And I'm going to bring it out. And this is the first word of stranger. Right, it's the word gar or Strong's gare. H sixteen sixteen. Gar. Right. Gar. And what it means is a sojourner. The form just below that. Gare. Gare. Okay. It's a sojourner. It's a temporary inhabitant, a newcomer lacking inherited rights. That's usually somebody that doesn't know they're an Israelite, right? Foreigners in Israel. Cool. Now let's go to the other stranger that's also in the same book right and the the one for that is nakar strong's okay? h5236 difference nahar nahar right and what it means is a foreign alien right there's two different types of strangers in the in the old testament you're either a nakar or you're a ga'er right so the ga'ers are usually the Israelites or the ones that don't know they're Israelites. But right here, like you can see in the car for stranger, it says foreign, alien, foreignness. If you look in the definition, it says a heathendom, 
right? That's talking about the heathens that are round about. Also, if you look into the law and you're talking about strangers, there's two different laws. If you have a stranger amongst you, you cannot sell him something dead, right? But you can sell that same dead thing to a stranger that's not of Israel. Why is that, David? Um, so are, are, are you referring to Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 21? I'm referring to the fact that the Lord is talking about two types of strangers, right? Like if me and one of these brothers just met, we used to be strangers to each other because they didn't know me. Right. Mm -hmm. But if I met you, I would know that you're or if they met you, you would be a stranger outside of me or outside of them. You're not a part of us. I'm a part of them. But because they don't know me, I'm considered a ga'ar or a ga'er. But you would be considered a nakar or a foreign alien. OK, so you're you're, you're mistake, mistaken there because. Uh, the Amalekite in in hold on which seconds. part which part am I mistaken on? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, 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 there, because it, I did say a lot there. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The air yeah. can, can yeah. refer to actual foreigners and does refer to foreigners who dwell in the land. And for, in Numbers chapter fifteen, we have Israel, and where's my camera? Israel, and we have it's backwards, and we have those who are strangers with Israel. And I gave, and when we go into mm. Deuteronomy chapter fourteen, you can give the the dead animal to the gear. You, no, you can't. You cannot give the dead animal. Can if you look, let me pull it up for you. Hey, go what, back you to that number fifteen and fourteen. The, go go back to that numbers fifteen and fourteen. Fifteen fourteen. What is, what is, is that? What word. is that? What is that stranger there? It's, it's the same gear. word right here. The it's same gear. word for the Amalekite. Is 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 gear right? The yeah. same word for the Amalekite. Okay, so what he did, he showed you another word, which is Nikar, right? No, I did not. No, he did. That's what he just. Did. I did. I showed it to you. Would you oh like yes, to I understand that. Okay, so he showed you a difference. That that that's yes. a difference. There are because two listen, words. hold on, because you know Israel was strangers as well. You you do know that, right? Strangers to other people, yes, not to no, each no, other. no. They were strangers to each other as well. Not only in the context of tribes or individual homes, not in the context of the whole nation. This is dealing with the whole nation. I, I, I listen to what I'm saying. I, Israelites were still strangers one to another when they went off, like the Ethiopian, right? That was not born in Jerusalem, right? He would be considered a stranger coming back into the land. You okay. understand that? I, I, even yes if no. that's the key, no, I don't agree. I'm but saying, is that is that would that be that's the same? No, way? because what look I'm, at the text. You're 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 bringing up irrelevant stuff because I'm in numbers it, really it really is no, 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 because I'm it was, says well, you. If one was born in hold Australia. Is hold on, Israel. hold on, hold on. If one was born in Australia and one was born in America, would they know each other? We're not dealing with that. We're no, dealing we are with dealing them with in that. the. No, they would be they're... connected by blood. They would be Jacobites or Israelites, right? Okay. But they would be connected by blood. But they don't know each other. But hey, look, I don't hey, know hey, that hey, I have a brother in in Australia. Hey, Is Mahal, it... pull up that Deuteronomy thirty-one and sixteen real quick. Can, can we deal with the fact that in this context, it is the sons of Israel as a whole are being addressed, and if mm -hmm. the sons of Israel are being addressed. It is referencing strangers to the sons of Israel. It is not dealing with other Israelites they don't know. The, the right, David, so we're going so, so we to reference it right here with the same word. But and and I'm, I just wanted to just also say that verse 13 is, tells you all that are born of the country, right? So you have Israelites that were born in the country and Israelites that actually had to migrate over to the land of Israel, they would be considered strangers, even At though they're not time, born they were of the all land. There, there was all, no, no, that's what we're saying. But that's, and, and there's, there's one thing about the law, David, is that not every law was when the laws were given. We didn't even have our land yet, so you had lands on real estate laws, but we didn't have any real estate yet. So these laws were prepping us for our inheritance of the land of Israel. So not every law that was given was actually applicable at that actual time. These were laws that was given for us going into the land. So you have to understand that because even if you did want to take that route and say, 
all Israel was together, fine. But the Most High gave Israelites the law. God gave Israel laws that was going to take place in future events. This is why he said, do not go into the land and marry what? The daughters of Canaan. We didn't that go was, into the land yet. But we, when he said, that's what sorry. I'm saying. When you go into that land, God told them, this is the law concerning these times and events that's going to happen. But there's still yeah. Israel. If somebody leaves and is somewhere else and is raised somewhere else, no, they are they're, still in Israel. They're still Israelites, but they're strangers because they were not oh, born no, in it's the strangers land. to Whoa. Israel. The, the <laughs> they whole don't nation. Don't David, they don't you don't sense. understand. Uh, David, you don't understand. Like I, do. I would be I, 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 two I, I examples of David, strangers. Again, in a Malachite and every, is a stranger. Again, and every every stranger definition, I can show you Israelites being called that name. Just just like I can but, show you Israelites being called Gentiles. But the, he, now, context, now here's the problem. You your have context the is going to be, you. yes, that's what I'm saying. But you have to have the context to understand these things. No, but you're, but you're making, nobody naturally reads the text that way. You have your theology and so you have to read it into it. Naturally, the no. language, no, naturally the language means Israel and foreigners to israel that's what it means if you actually read the language so here's now you question. have to make up this thing even though we have examples of um, an amalekite with the children of israel we Man, have examples can... where they could they could give the the dead carcass to a stranger <laughs> of the no, same term it, it they couldn't can't. do that to an israel so, so here's the thing examples. an israelite an israelite can give a dead carcass to another nation but he cannot give a dead carcass to another israelite they're a stranger <laughs> in the land. That's the no. difference. So, so, so your your point your point is mute because I can actually hold a, a, a another nation as a slave forever and hold his children forever. But when it comes to my own people, if he was a um, not a slave but more of a yeah. servant paying his debt off, that's a seven year um, term. I so agree. even even your whole identity, your whole you're trying to make all nations equal with Israel, but I can sell you a, 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 an animal that died for itself. I can't do that to my own people. That's that's against the laws of, of Moses. Yes, but it's the same so, so this not the, It's not the same. So even it's, going back is. to the original point, <laughs> the original now point is how is it? You've, now no, you've changed, no, David, no, you, this actually, David, a David, totally real quick. Way and, David, and, and this and goes back to the original point because one. we're asking you how is it that all nations are under the same covenant if I can give you an animal that died of itself? Mm -hmm. If the, I can give you an animal mm -hmm. that died of itself, how are we under the same covenant? Because if I can't if give I'm, another initial, like an animal that died of itself, I can no, treat you the, worse than I can treat my own brother. No, here's that's, the, that's answer, the difference. Because not every stranger would participate in the covenant. If they want to, which is what we see here in Numbers chapter 15, if they want to, they can. They can offer sacrifices. The same <clears throat> law applies if they want. So you're saying, I just want to make sure I'm hearing you right. So you're saying that if a Moabite was living in the land of Israel, he can do what he, whatever he can. He can sacrifice to his own God in the land of Israel. No, what I'm saying is, is that he can choose to sacrifice to the God of Israel and keep the law completely. Mm. He can't, he, hold on, hold on. The Moabite cannot sacrifice anything because Deuteronomy 23 says he cannot come into the congregation. Bingo, so you, forever. You do, you do error, for not- generation. That forever. means forever. That forever. means forever. That's well, that's Ruth, a that's a Ruth was if if they don't did, did, did Ruth did Ruth bring in a, a, a sacrifice, or did she have to come up she, under Boaz? She followed the law. Okay, the, exactly. But <laughs> she never. She says, never. She David. never. David. She never gave a sacrifice. Well, we don't know that. It, that's an argument. It does, the Bible that. doesn't say that. Well, so can you show me? Well, can you show? He so David, can, David, David, can <laughs> you show again, us I've that Ruth did you, offer an, uh, offer a sacrifice? I'm showing you where strangers can join with Israel and offer sacrifice. But we have we have mm -hmm. different understandings on who those strangers well, are. That's what it, we're but saying. you can understand it differently. But the language is clear. But again, David, this goes back to Yashawan's question, which was, can you show us in, in the in the covenant where the other nations, the Gentiles, the Goy, Goyin, however you want to word it, where where are they equal in the covenant 
um, uh, the Most High gave to the Israelites because this goes back to who the saints are. Equal in terms of like inheritance or what are we talking about? Any Anything. I can anything? feed you okay. food that died of itself. I can usurp usury on you. I can't do it to other Israelites. So how are we the same? Well, we're how is this end, even the same covenant? In well, I just, it, that the the sacrifice, the sacrificial, everything we just reviewed and following the law is the co is is the law of the covenant. That is the co part. Of the, the, but the covenant, covenant was for the Israelites, not for all nations. But he's but God. What does God say in verse fifteen? That that so as ye are, so shall the stranger be before the Lord to the Lord. If they are fully participating in the law, they are the same to the Lord. Right there. But okay, so verse 13 tells you that we have ones that are born in the country and the sojourner. That's the one that's not born in the country. That's the problem you're having. You're trying to make these sojourners non-Israelites when it Israelite. says yes, because they're it not. says you. Exactly. You. They're all you Israelites. Is so Israelite. even it's but then you have, again, you have Israelites. you have Israelites that are born in the land of Israel, and you have Israelites that are not born in the land. So if I were to go into the land of Israel, I would be a sojourner because I was not born in the land. Nine times out of Israelite. ten, I would be an Israelite, but I would be a sojourner. Not be a sojourner. Not be, be an Israelite. Yes. Okay. So can somebody get me Leviticus twenty five thirty five? Because I want to show you. I got it right here. It says this is Leviticus twenty five thirty five. Show it on the screen so I can. I'm going to show you, and I'm going to attempt to show you, is Israelites being called strangers. And, and bring it up when you get a you chance. See it? Yeah, it's up there. You see it? Come. This is Leviticus 25, 35. And if thy brother, who is the brother of an Israelite? It, who, what's the Other context? Israelites, the correct? Con I showed you Israelites being the, uh, the addressed people in the context. Let's let's get okay. the context to see who's being addressed. Okay, this is about the redemption of the land. All right, you redeem the land. This is the law we're talking about. So, no other nation got the laws. The Most High gave the law to Israel. So he says, "And if thy brother, Israelite, be waxen poor and fallen in decay with thee, then thou shalt relieve him. Yea, though he be a stranger or a sojourner." Mm -hmm. that he may live with thee, 30, 36. Take thou no usury of him or increase, but fear thy God that thy brother may live with thee. Thou shalt not give him thy money upon usury, meaning I can't charge interest to another Israelite, nor lend him any, nor lend him thy victuals for increase. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, to give you the land of Canaan and be your God. So what we're okay. seeing right here is other Israelites not being, uh, you can't add usury on them, and he's a stranger and a sojourner. So, so is he, how is he a stranger? In what way? Explain stranger in this context. What does it Again, mean? so you have Israelites that are not born in the land. You have Israelites that are not circumcised on the eighth day. You have Israelites that took on the customs of the Greeks. I'm not asking these all are all the strangers. I'm saying here, in what way is he a stranger? No, this is a law for when you do come into this con. If you come into this this situation, right? Okay. How is he a stranger, though? The, I just told you, if he's not born in the land, this is so not. Does mistaken. anything suggest it's, he wasn't born in the land here? Is that that what he's okay, about? I'm glad so you said that. Screen, Real quick, in this context, screen, does it just on, mean David, you don't know on. him. David, hold on. If you look on the screen. This gives you the definition of sojourner that's in there, and it also means stranger. Right, to a person. Absolutely. If but there is somebody who you personally don't know no, who, who is that, an Israelite. That's not, that's not what it's talking about. It's, it's talking not what about, it's talking about. It's talking about a sojourner among your brethren. It's not talking about everybody else. So, okay. It, it, okay. it, it, it begins the, the verse. It says, and if thy brother, right? Mm -hmm. It's talking about the brother. Who is right. my brother? My brother are these brothers on the panel. My brother right. is a brother that's attached to me, right? If he's in hired servant as a sojourner or a stranger, he shall be with thee and shall serve thee unto the year of Jubilee. That's seven years. So where did he come from? Does this mean he came from another? I don't land? know. He, he maybe he was David. In South your question. Africa. I don't know. That, yeah, that question. That question doesn't matter. The point is, 
We're talking about Israelite stores so that sojourn into the land. It matters That's immensely. The whole, Here's no, but why. You're asking where he's from. It doesn't say it, this specific sojourner. It just says in the event that an Israelite comes from another land, this is how you treat him. It doesn't. Okay. It, but it's this context is not saying somebody that has to be from another land. They, That's they, what a sojourner they, is. That's what we're talking about. On. No, the nation of Israel as a whole was large, right? And so you can go from city to city, even amongst the different tribes, and be a stranger to the people you come to visit. Doesn't mean you were born in a different land. There's no indication at this point in time that any thought of being born in a different land relative to Israel is present. All it's saying is it's from somebody somewhere else that you don't know who is a brother. That is okay. The so, only thing so that's this is why about. this is why numbers fifteen and thirteen. You see, you wanted us to start at fourteen, but again, thirteen says you all that are thing. born. Okay, I'm going to read it. All that are born of the country shall do these things after this manner. So we all understand that you have Israelites that are born of the country of Israel and some Israel that Israelites that are not born of the country, which is why uh, Deuteronomy 16 says on these certain feast days that Israelites have to come to the place of where I place my name because there's going to be Israelites that are scattered abroad that you have to understand that they are strangers or sojourners that have to come into the land, which then makes them strangers. Well, I'm, so I'm looking at the actual text here and looking at the translations. There is no word country. It just where, says where, where are you at? I'm looking a at native, a native of what, David? A native Those of what? who are a native of Israel. Uh, and Israel is a land as well, correct, David? Well, but OK, at, at this point okay. in time, there are people. And they're going oh, no, to but man. but is but right. Israel, hey, Israel native Israelites right there. A native of Israelite, right? So so mm -hmm. again, that's that's where again that so you're cut right there, right? No, I'm not cut. You at all. But the it, it's irrelevant though, because they right. are all Israelites, and in the context, the you refers to Israelites. So if Israelites you, that are born in the land, this is how you treat them. You're going to have Israelites that are not born in the land. They going to be born in the land. No, you have Israelites that are scattered abroad. Not, this is this why was, James 1 is 1. Yeah, that's that's Again, but David, again, context. David, David, again, this is a this is a law for in the event of something happens. Again, okay. these laws were given you and we were not others. Hold on. You again, you have laws that were given and we didn't they didn't even qualify for us yet. When it comes to mixing seeds, we don't even have a, a land to grow these seeds at. So you can't mix diverse seeds if you don't have a land yet. You're still sojourning through the wilderness. So why is that law given and we weren't in the land yet? I understand they were going to be in the land, but not we're, we're, that's the immediate future versus you're talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years later with events that, that are not expected. Now, my point okay, is okay is, no no on, no it wasn't that far behind 15. it wasn't that far forward it wasn't that far forward because the gadites weren't in the land the manessites Look weren't in the land 15. so so you what can't is, even use that hold on how, real quick if they because are david, israelites david if gad, they are the israelites, tribe of gad the tribe of gad was on the other side of the jordan river so they yes. were not of the land they would be strangers they but they were still israelites what is but the point you're, of you're hung up you're, again your your point of you're, 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 what you're hung up at is you're saying strangers means a non-Israelite. Our I've point is, no, no, but and we're showing you right that Israelites being outside the land is also called strangers. So mm -hmm. what best fits the context here? And then we get to the last clause of verse fifteen: As you are, so shall the stranger be before the Lord. If they're both Israelites, how it, duh. I mean, of course, they're going to be the same. They're just Israelites. If one is not an Israelite, now they're significant. One ordinance shall be both for both of you of the congregation, also for the sojourner that, so, that sojourneth with you. Okay. If they're both Israelites, eh, why do I need, you know? Okay. Uh, so if a, 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 a not, sojourner, but here's the thing, a sojourner wouldn't have animal offerings because he's not, he's not from that land. You would have to that like my my Israelite cousin that came from 
I don't know, Greece, and I'm in Israel, I'm in, I'm in a, a, a land in Israel, he comes to keep Passover, right? Or he comes to, 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 to give an offering. I'm going to give him an offering of my own because he's a sojourner. He doesn't have actual livestock. But that has nothing to do with, 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 with them being the same way before the Lord. Okay, let's read it again. I'm going to read it again. It's irrelevant. To say, to I'm going to read it again. I'm going to read it again. This is verse 14. And if a stranger sojourn with you or whosoever be among you in your generations and will offer an offering made by fire, an, a, another nation cannot come into the congregation to even offer an offering. So this, from that point, from your standpoint, we don't even have to continue because a Moabite, an Ammonite, an Edomite, they cannot come into the congregation to make any offering, but I'm going to continue. It says, I'm going to read it again. And if a stranger sojourn with you or, whoso, or whosoever be among you in your generations and will offer an offering made by fire, right? We're talking about an animal sacrifice, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So again, when you go to Deuteronomy 23, the law says they cannot come into the congregation. Yes, so they can't even they bring why they can't even bring their animal sacrifices to the congregation. That was right? because they were pagan worshipers. If they converted, they were allowed to convert it to what convert to, 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 to the religion to of the Israelites. There is no religion of the Israelites. Yeah, you there is. There That's is not they, a religion. The, the, if you want to say if you want to say that they, they, they had to obey the laws that we gave them. Then, then that's fine, but that's not a religion. That's just them being sub subjected to the to the dominant race of the Israelite in that land. Hey, well, no, lucky. I just what, what I'm talking there. about is like what Josephus, who is a first century Jew, hey, forget about, about Jose. Hold on, hold on, David Salakia. Forget about Josephus because Josephus turned on the Israelites, but that's another story. But look, what I want to know is what gate of heaven are you getting into? Well, what foundation is going to support you? I mean the Bible. No, no, what no, else? no. The, the 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 found the foundations of of the city are the twelve apostles. So if you're not one of the twelve apostles, then there's no. That's there's not what that 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 definitely isn't what that says. But well, now that doesn't say so that about the now, gates. Now here here's a question. Here's another question. Also, is that if everybody was getting into the same heaven, then why is it that on Revelation eleven and two, it's talking about leaving the Gentiles outside of the gates why is that why is that needed in order for heaven to be complete uh let me look at the text hold on one sec it's on the screen if you need it uh i can't see around it as much sometimes that's fine but sometimes it's a little bit more difficult for me uh rise and measure the temple of god and the altar those who worship in there do measure the core outside the temple leave it so the gentiles Right. Yeah, this and then uh, if you go into 2112, it says that the 12 gates which belong to the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, but yet the Gentiles are on the outside of these, heaven's gates. These this is not what's heaven. Not, what is this it? is on earth the, the, because New Jerusalem has well, to come down out of heaven. Well, that's that's what the Lord's prayer says. It says, as in heaven, so shall it be done on the earth. Well, yes, but if this is the end and there's a temple that is built on earth which would be the context here, then this, the Gentiles being outside would be on the heathen. earth. Heathen. And would so this has nothing to do with other. new Jerusalem that comes down out of heaven after all this is over with that, that, that comes much later. That, but that doesn't, but you and I both know that revelation isn't done in, uh, in, in, uh, in sequential form. Right. Something that's in 18 can be happening in actual actual chapter three. It's not in 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 um in sequential format. Well, but this is just talking about the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is only has 12 gates. So I ask you again, what gate are you going through? What what gate will Abraham go through? What gate will uh, Noah uh, go through? What gate will Enoch go through? Abel? They're going through the gate that they were promised by the most high. I'm asking what that? you, I'm not worried about, I'm not worried about them. I know they'll be there. I'm asking well, what, you, what foundation what is you supporting you. Uh, the Bible, of course. No, no, no. It says the 12 apostles. So if you're not one no, of the 12 it says apostles. The 12 it says there'll be 12 angels 
and the and and the names written thereon will be the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. And so, so again, I ask reading. you, what gate are you going through? Uh, well, uh, you keep reading, and the tw um, the you're, the foundation of this wall. You're oh, deflecting oh, from the point. No, what I, gate it, are it, you it going doesn't into? stay in the text. My point, my point is, is it's it's a silly argument because the text. It's not a silly. It's only a silly argument to you because, because you're not going to be in the in the. In the I, I, will, I will. I will. I will answer That's you why. in two ways. First of all, the text never anywhere says that you have to enter the gate by the tribe you belong to. Abraham, Isaac, Noah, none of them oh. belong to a tribe, and yet they will all get into the city. I will answer you, though, with Ezekiel chapter 47, where it says that when you dwell among Israel as a, as a foreigner, uh, you receive the inheritance of Israel. Which, so which it verse says, is that? Uh, Ezekiel 47, starting in 21. So you shall divide this land among you according to the tribes of Israel. Okay. You shall allot. So which tribe are you? You shall allot it as an inheritance for yourself, that is Israel, and for the sojourners who reside among you and have children among you. They shall be to That's you as native born children of Israel. Oh, hold on you, now, but, but look, but it, that same word, that stranger's word is again, it's gar. But, so but it but, goes but, back, it goes back to the same argument. What mm -hmm. is the difference between the two sets of strangers? Why is one gar and why is one nakar? Well, I, I've shown you that it includes that gar includes foreigners it who are not that that are not Israelites. I've shown that. So why There's, wouldn't it okay? Use hey, gar real twice? quick, real quick, real quick. Can I can I read it in the KJV? Mm -hmm. All right, this is Ezekiel 47, 22, and this is going to actually make um, make things more clear. It says, and it shall come to pass that you shall divide it by lot for an inheritance unto you and to the strangers that sojourn among you, which shall beget children among you, and they shall be, listen, and they shall be unto you as born in the country among the children of Israel. So again, our point is, David, that you have people that are not born in the country they're called the strangers right among the children of israel they shall have inheritance with you among the tribes of israel so well, we're talking on. about what, what, who's born in israel at that who's born in the land of israel at that at, in the end at the end israelites time, you had you had israelites that are born in the land and then you have see? israelites that are that are that are outside the land that are sojourners. They're not born in the country. That's the point we're making. So what? So you think right now that there are Israelites in the land of Egypt? That's your position too? Oh, wait, what? I mean, are the land there of Israel? Israelites born in the land of Egypt? I Israel, sorry. No, no. Okay, well, then there's right then now? then no. none. Nobody is the, the no. If that's if it's referring to those then born in the land of Israel then there is nobody to whom the first group applies. But and what, so everybody would be a foreigner. So then the whole thing makes no sense. Why, why or, are you, but why are you or, adding your, why are you adding your nation is in the everybody? Mm -hmm. The, what do you mean? You adding your, you said everybody. Why are you adding your nation as part of the everybody? Well, it's foreigners who, who join themselves to Israel, which would be, those who are believers in Christ, they are grafted. No, I don't see believers in Christ. I see well, ones that are born in the in country. The that's what well, we're well, okay. well, right now we're in Ezekiel 47. Yes, 22. the strangers that sojourn with you, if all the Israelites are outside of the are born out and outside of the physical land of Israel, they all come into the land of Israel, then strangers can't mean those born outside of the land of Israel. That would have to just be the tribes of Israel. So you have the tribes of Israel and every, and, and anybody who goes with them because none of them are native to the actual land. And, and okay. And even when you go through chapter 48, it continues to talks about these tribes of Israel. So mm -hmm. we're talking about physical Israelites here, right? Um. Yeah, the the, the physical okay. Israelites and the strangers okay. who join them. Okay, and the strangers that are not born in the land, right? Which, since no Israelite is born in the land, it can't refer to Israelites. Wait, wait, what? Wait, you well, said, you, since you no said, Israelites are not. Say that again. You said today there are not Israelites born in the land. 
in, mm-hmm. of Israel. So by, by because of that, the tribes of Israel are all born outside of the physical land of Israel. And, and that's, yet they're and still, that's the that's and, the yet, that's the sojourners. No, and that's you the said strangers. all of them are. So if, if there's are, nobody that's in what the I'm land saying. Of, is there David, any is there any Israelite the, in the land of Israel right now? But wait, yeah, they are is, they, they, they are Israelites in the land of Israel right now. Yes, the but majority. Who says who says that that no, is the not land the majority. of Israel? Well, this is what it's referring to: their inheritance of the land. Because last time I I checked, the land that belongs to Israel is the land of Canaan. I don't mean I didn't, but by Israel, I don't mean the country Israel. I mean the land of Israel. That's talking about actual people. Right, like how in Thor, you know, he talks about uh, what's what's the name of his country again? As uh, um, oh gosh, what the, I just had it on the tip of my. Well, tongue. he defines the land in the text. With it says the division of the land. This is the boundary. So this is the land. Made. This is the land that the Israelites will inherit again. Correct. Right. That's what we're okay. talking about. And so when you're going to have the, the Israelites. Time, hold on, hold on. But this is what I'm saying. So you're going to have Israelites going back to the land. And then you're going to have other Israelites that's going to come into the land as sojourners. And on what basis, given that there, it's according to okay, the tribes of Israel. It's okay, this is verse 13. It says, thus saith the Lord God, this shall be the border whereby ye shall inherit, inherit the land according to the 12 tribes of Israel. Joseph shall have two portions because of Vanessa and Ephraim. Right. So it's talking about the Israelites inheriting the land of Israel. So yes. this hasn't happened yet. This is a future prophecy. Right. So, so you're you going to have Israelites that's going to inherit the land. And then you're going to have sojourners that's going to come in. This is when we establish the kingdom of Israel, like we read in Acts, the first chapter. But they're still Israelites. So, so, right. So, they, so you're going to have Israelites that's going to inherit the land. And then you're going to have sojourning Israelites okay. and they're going to sojourn <laughs> and travel to the land and take their inheritance as well. Let, let me ask you this question. If, if, if God wanted to write in his word that foreigners could inherit the land and foreigners could be saved, what is the term he would use for the, those groups? Okay, so let's let's think about this. If I'm a sojourner, what plot of land do I have? No, 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 no. I would That's have to. I would have to. Hold on. I just want to make sure I establish something. I would have to live amongst family, and I would have to take on essentially the house rules of my cousins and uncles because I don't have a land. But uh, I think Yashua, you want to say something? Cause I just want to get this in real quick because I'm, I'm finna hop off in a minute. So you believe any time in the scriptures? where it says stranger, that that's talking about another nation, correct? No, I believe every word has a context and a defin- and a range of meaning. And we have to okay. analyze okay. when we translate. Okay, I'm asking, you about, I'm asking you about this specific yes. word. And so, so, no, I think could, every word has try to, to be break- interpreted in context. Okay, because he's been breaking the word stranger. We've been breaking the word stranger down to you for the past 20, 30 minutes. And right. I've shown you contrary examples okay. where it means other things. Okay, so what does the word stranger mean to you? It depends on how you use it in a sentence. It can be used as in some person I run into at the grocery store. They're a stranger. It can be used in stranger danger as so, in so somebody can Israelite, who is can, can, I mean, Israelites, can Israelites be strangers? to each other in that they don't know each other, like on an individual basis, or they travel to a different part of the country. Absolutely. But it can also mean those who are from foreign countries, which is the definition that when we analyze the text and consider what is transpiring in the text without preconception is, mm-hmm. is most like is the most likely definition. It's only okay, when we so, assume something, then we have to oh, force this oh, meaning, even okay, though it's not a logical meaning. Okay, well, I want you to make this logical for me. Are the are the other nations gonna be slaves to Israel in the kingdom of heaven? 
those who do not j first join themselves to them will be. I didn't. I, I, I didn't. I didn't ask all that. It's I asked both. you: Are the other are the it's other both. nations going to be slaves to the Israelites in the kingdom of heaven? There's some some of the nations, some some people of the nations, yes. Some people of the nations, no. Okay, I agree because some people of the nations are going to be destroyed according to the Bible. Well, but okay. as a whole, are the Israelites going to rule? Are the well, <laughs> that's what the Bible says. So as a whole, are the Israelites going to rule and have the other nations in slavery? Whether it's some of the other nations. Or whether it's in general. So what I mean is that some of the other nations, some members of the other nations, will mm -hmm. share in Israel's inheritance. Some members of the other nation will be in servitude. Damn. Okay. So you're saying that some of the heathen nations are going to be had the same inheritance as the Israelites in the kingdom. That's what I read right here in Ezekiel 47. Yes. <laughs> All right. So let me, let, let me read this scripture and you tell me what this means. Right. All right. All right. So I'm going to go to revelation and I bring this out all the time. Right. Revelation two and 26. Right. I'm sorry. Hey, what was it Re again? Uh, revelation. What'd you say? 20. No, two and twenty six. Two and twenty six. All right. So, real quick, um, David. You know, we we would love to continue to do this all night, but would you be interested in doing another day? Or you know, I don't want to. You know. Yeah, uh, you know? I, I can't commit right now when, but I mean, sometime over the, in the next, you know, two three weeks. Yeah, yeah that, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, right. I mean, uh, I've enjoyed the conversation. It's been absolutely. stimulating and. You know, I think we've been all pretty respectful, which has been really nice. But, you know, we have our moments of. And, and look, we didn't even drop any curse bombs. Right? <laughs> I see? really appreciate that. Hey, hey, we made sure we did that for you, David. I, I definitely did. All right. So let him bring this precept out. And I, I don't know if you got a rebuttal. And then, you know, I guess we can call it a night. Oh, yeah. That's all right. I, I don't have a. Yeah, go for it. OK. OK. Right. So you said that. Are, are other nations going to be ruling in the kingdom? Well, what I'm saying is that there will be people from mm -hmm. the nations who will be ruling. Not the majority, but there will be people. Okay, well, is there a scripture that you can show that certain individuals of other nations are going to be rulers in the kingdom of heaven? Um, I'm trying to think about specifically with reference to rule. Um, yeah, I would say Romans, well not Romans, Revelation uh, chapter 5 and uh, verse 10, well, verses 9 and 10. It says, you ransom people for God and for every from every tribe and la uh, language and people and nation and you made them a kingdom or kings mm -hmm. and priests to our god and they no. shall reign <laughs> on the earth but okay so that's kind of uh going off the point but the thing is what is a heathen is a heathen someone of another nation it's it's someone of another nation, but also someone who worships false gods. So like, so wait a minute, but we're Gentiles. Wow, wait a minute, wait a minute. So you just said that a heathen is someone that worships other gods. Oh, yeah. I you just that said that. Eyes. Right, so so no, you I just said, said that. Wait a minute, oh, hold on, wait a minute, hold, hold on, wait a minute, because we recording this. Good, so I you just said. You just said a heathen is someone that worship other gods. And then you just referenced, you said that that's why I said that they were in times past Gentiles. Right. And I'm what I, but what did I said? Both thing. I said they're one and the other. So you never that, said that until now, though. No, I did. Right. Go back, play so the back. same thing. Because that, was our, that thing. was our original point. <laughs> so I, I so the same. Don't listen to what I said. I said both. No, oh, you didn't wow, say that until now. I know I said both. <laughs> because David, our whole point was 
being no carried faith. away to these dumb idols, which is in First Corinthians. I That's why we were saying what? Israelites can be Gentiles. You said Israelites can't be Gentiles. And yeah. now you're saying uh, the qualification of a Gentile is someone that is of another nation or and someone that worships or. another idol. Right. So, 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 so which like, one okay. is the or? So, you just so, said okay. that. You just I said did that. Not say or. If I said okay, or, well, then it was a, a, a bad. But the point mom. is, <laughs> the point is, you you made Gentiles only other nations. You never said yes. anything about uh, worshiping another god. We've no, been saying that. This do. is why that's we were. This point. is. But this is why. <laughs> this is why we were saying from the beginning, David, that a, a Gentile is an is an Israelite that worships or takes on the customs. Of other nations, that's yeah. all been our point from the beginning but then there's of the still, conversation. No matter, and and my point is, is that no matter what. So it now you really agree does. with it. You will, you no, agree with no, it. that Israelite can be a Gentile. No matter what an Israelite does, they're still an Israelite. It does not. We change we agree with that, but we agree with that. But we're also saying that they're also they are also Gentile, and you admitted it by saying. That a Gentile is someone that worships another god. No, who is born of another nation and worships an other gods. It can, okay, oh, you, okay, okay. So, okay, so, so what, what, what has the worship another? If they're already born of another nation, which you qualify as that being a Gentile, why does it matter if they worship other gods? Because that's, they, that's the heathen element of it. Like, if I'm born of another nation, but, yeah, I'm a Gentile, but, but I'm, am I a right, heathen? But, but, but what, what relevance has the worship of the other gods have anything to do with it, though? If it, hey, if a Gentile was simply... You cut yourself up. Come on, man. All right, let me so bring this out in Revelation. A heathen. A heathen, right. not a Gentile. That was the question you asked me. You said, what so is what, a heathen? Well, you you said that you right. I didn't say that. You said that. You, you said a gentile. A you you just referenced a gentile as someone that worships other gods. Someone who is born of another nation and you didn't say that at first. God. You yes, literally just I did. Go when right, we're well, done. Let's... Go listen to the recording. It is. Right, we're there. gonna go back. So well, let's let's read quick, this again. I asked a All question right. earlier. Nobody answered. I was wondering if we could get an if I could get an answer. Well, well, well uh, when earlier when. Uh, I think before we got in, before we even got into Revelation. What what was your question? My question was this: If God wanted to use a word that would describe or be the term that identifies the rest of mankind being able to come to salvation, to join with His people. What word would be used to describe them? To, you know, what would be that term? If it's not Gentile, if it's not stranger, if it's not alien, if it's not Greek, if it's not Scythian, if it's not he or um, not he, um, uh, what's the uh, barbarian, if it's none of those words, what word was in the vocabulary of the Bible writers? that would be used to tell us that there is another people that can be saved or rather that the rest of mankind can join Israel and be saved. What would be the word? It would probably be that doesn't exist. Well, then, then your position is not falsifiable. There's no way that, that your position can be even debated because there's no word in language that even describes a position contrary to you. Well, all we know is that when it refers to strangers, it's different words right. for the same thing. Right. So what and that mean? must mean that's like, that's like, and you know, and, uh, uh, let's see, let, what, what's a by word that we can use. Um, hmm. It ain't that, Ma. What he what he's really trying to do is play on words. Oh, I know. I no, know. I'm not. I'm asking legitimately. But, what would well, be no, the you, word? Well, see, here's the thing. Because even if we did give you one word, right? Because you play on words and so many different translations, right? Right? Because mm -hmm. you, you're gonna you're gonna take and isolate that one word that's given to you, and then find another word in your world to say that this. You know, because because we said just like just like you played on Helene and Helenist days, right? 
you 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 is you those is playing on words when you know specifically we're going to show a time period in which uh jews kept a certain custom that you cannot find in these books that we hold right now so we would have to go into the maccabean period to show what that period is based on a word right to give the understanding so you playing on that right there and that understanding we're never going to come to any agreement right but so I'm, that's not what i'm doing my point i have an actual point with my question and and, and and i'm open to being wrong in this point but my point is that i don't believe there is a word available in their vocabulary that could ever prove to you or be used as a descriptor of that group uh, and to say what just, to, to, say, to, that, say, to that, say that in the kingdom of god they're going to be somebody outside of the children of israel one word oh hey, look, we have gentiles we have greeks we have no. all these different terms that custom that normally under every normal circumstance okay mean non-israelites all right what about dog dog <clears throat> Yeah. Why would I just want to know what about dog? Is dog good enough? No. How would that work? Because that would most likely be describing an animal. No, I well, well, it, it, well. Since we're playing on words, and what you based on what you just said, you said give you one word that would show non-Israelites, right? That would not be ruling in the kingdom of God, right? So there's a distinction you're looking for. One word. I just gave you a dog. That so so if, if the Bible used the word referred to dogs in the kingdom, right. you're going to say that that would be the word that would refer show that they're there. It, it would it would show that there would be dogs that would not be in the kingdom of God. Again, my question is is what would be the term that would be used if the Bible writers wanted to use a term mm -hmm. that would say the rest of mankind. Mm -hmm. has the opportunity to join Israel to be in the kingdom. Oh, has the opportunity. You're looking for the word that the people would have the opportunity. Yes. Well, yeah, there's nobody that that's going to have that opportunity. And if you would like to come back for a, 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 de a debate on that, there's no other nation that's going to. And listen, you just answered it in this, in this tape right here. I asked you that question. If Israel never fell, Right. You remember if Israel never fell as a people. Right. Would they be the ruling class in the earth? You said yes. Mm -hmm. OK. But so I also said Other people always had the opportunity to join. No, 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 no. You can't listen. See, 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 you will never, ever be able to show from Old Testament concept all the way into the Messiah's words and foundation himself. Right. Because your whole your whole premise and principle has been uh, dispensationalism and time periods. I'm not right? a dispensationalist. Well, you were basically because even even you you've broken you tried to break up even the Messiah's ministry to to show the time periods of which he may have dealt solely with Israel or where where he may have opened things up for other people. Oh, right. I, I didn't do that. He did that because he told the disciples, "Don't go to the Gentiles and the Samaritans." And then later he told them to go to the Gentiles and Samaritans. All right. So listen, when Christ came in his ministry, who was it for? Israel. It was for Israel. So mm -hmm. where did he go? Did he oh, did he only go to Israel? Uh, well, he and on a few occasions he talked to other people, but otherwise, out of those few occasions, yes. The land, he, the land mass that he went to was it oh all, yeah, the, the, yeah, land, yeah. the land mass was all Israel. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, you 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 would you would want to come back to have a further discussion about this. I mean, yeah, I, I would really like you guys to think about it, though. Like, if well, if no, you don't fall on your sword, I just want to let you know. Well, no, no, I, and maybe you're not understanding my question too. Let me just yeah. try to clarify. I'm not saying that the term has to be in the Bible. What <laughs> I'm saying is, is that if there was, if the just hypothetically, like if the Bible did teach that the rest of mankind can be saved hypothetically okay just you know what would they be called for us to know that it's saying the rest of mankind can be saved slaves and servants 
How would that servants, tell us the rest of mankind is saved? S- servants and handmaids. But can't aren't Israelites called servants? Nope. Yeah, yeah, they can sell themselves into slavery. Not in not in future prophecy. And they can't <laughs> hey, look, you're not gonna use that that you're not gonna use that because KJV <laughs> has the most precise translation on that word in Deuteronomy 2868. Okay, it's all the other Bibles that came after, right? Even the Tinsdale, which wasn't Tinsdale only practiced on the New Testament, and then he came into the Old Testament, uh, you know, with his own translation. But the Tinsdale only really translated the New Testament. But when you when you talk about being sold, the the Lord disagrees with you when you go into Jeremiah. When you go into the prophecies, he talks about that he sold you not for his pleasure, but because they pissed him mm-hmm. off, essentially. And I'm paraphrasing, of course. Okay. He but, said that he sold them. So you can't even play that gen- that that well, I don't know. I, I'm it. lost as to what you're saying. Okay, I, well, I, I, we could exp- I, well, I'll explain it to you in, in our in our next discussion. Okay. But. So just to be clear though, you're saying that if the Bible refers to slaves going into the king or being saved, if it refers to slaves being saved, that would refer to the rest of mankind? Uh, no, it would be everybody that's outside of the nation of Israel, when the <clears throat> Messiah returns, are going to be servants and handmaids, a.k.a. slaves. Okay, but that's, that's not my what question. Be. Well, my hold, question. Hold on, is, let's, let, me, let, me, let me say this. There's no... There, look, he's he, he trying to play game. You're not going to find it. I, I'm not... The it's other nation, no, no. Well, it's hypothetically... Well, okay, it's well, a, we're not... Hold it's on, a, we're, we're not playing. Magic. Well, listen, listen, we're not playing hypothetical. We're playing. Let's say if the Lord precept upon precept. But if right? the Bible, if so there's hold no on, Bible hold on, way. hold on. So in the Bible, the other nations are not what you think is salvation is preservation for the other nations to go into slavery. But as for the rulership in the kingdom of heaven, that's only for the nation of Israel. And we go get to that. That's why I wanted to go to this Revelation 2 and 25. So, uh, Ephraim, can we bring this up? And then uh, I'm gonna, that's going to be it for me. It says, uh, the book of Revelation 2, 25, it says, But that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Right, and so he, how is it? Hold on, let's stop right there. And this is where it all gets confused. That if I'm a another nation, how am I gonna have power over the nations? The same that as every that, king. The no, same that, as every that, king who's a, who comes from the nation. But who was this written to? Who was this talking about? This is talking about the ones that overcome. Those who are who believers. are the one, who are the ones that's gonna overcome? The believers. Damn. Well, of of all nations, yes, that's what it says in Romans in Revelation chapter five. We I just read a minute ago. Look, all right, look, let's finish this because you don't even know what this is referencing. This is actually going back to the Old Testament, a scripture in the Old Testament. I'm gonna show you. So let's let's finish reading on. Con, it says, uh, "And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations." And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. And even as I received of my father. And right, I so, will give him the morning star. Right. So let's go to, I'm going to go to where this is referencing back in the Old Testament. Right. Okay. So the nations is talking about the same thing in this context. Right. <clears throat> so this is the book of Psalms chapter two and verse eight. It says, well, matter of fact, I'm going to start at verse six. It says, yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. So who is that king? That Jesus. king is the same, right? The same man that we just read that was speaking in Revelation, the second chapter. Mm-hmm. It says, I will declare the decree. The Lord have said unto me, thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee 
the heathen for thy inheritance. So the heathens that is talking about in Psalms chapter two is the same nations that is talking about going into Revelation chapter two. This is literally where it comes from, right? So are these heathens talking about Israelites or is this talking about other nations? Is talking about people of other nations, not those. Right. Who, oh, oh, wait, wait. So let, let's stop right there. So you just acknowledge that this is talking about other nations, right? Mm -hmm. So these other nations that are not Israelites are the same nations that it's talking about in Revelation chapter two. So you can't use the nations in Revelation and say that that's talking about everybody and the rulership over those people is for everybody. I wouldn't right? use the term Listen, nations. I would on, use the term peoples. Hold on, hold on. Well, is we going to what the Bible, what the Bible is using? So let's finish reading, right? So it says, "Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance." So why would the Lord give heathens inheritance over other heathens? Right. When I mean, this is not referring to the other nations, this is referring to Israel. Right. It says. And the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession, thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Right. Mm hmm. So how was how was that talking about rulership for the other nations? Where it just said we gonna have power over the other nations. Can you please explain that. Yes, it. Well, again, I'll reiterate from what we talked about way earlier in Romans chapter eleven that believers who well, we're not talking about Romans. We just talking I, about what I'm, we just I'm read in the book of Psalms. Your question, but I'm, okay, I'm but just citing the book of Romans is irrelevant. The book of Romans is irrelevant to what we just brought out. Okay, so uh, if you're saying that individual, if you're saying that the Lord is gonna have anyone from any other nation outside of Israel that believes on him to rule in the kingdom of heaven, how does that link up with these scriptures that we just brought up? Because if we're going to have power over the other nations and break them into pieces. Because it is individuals out of those nations who are, who join and become part of Israel. Okay. What scripture, what scripture is that? <laughs> I was trying to say that Romans chapter 11 Romans chapter Israel, 11. Okay, I, I, let's go. Let's go into Romans chapter eleven. See who well, that is. Did that at the who, very beginning. Who was Paul speaking to in Romans chapter eleven? Let's get there. I love that you're going to Romans chapter eleven. Let's hey, go I, there. I, I think David thinks that Paul's words are over the Most High. Well, he, he don't even. Well, the thing is, David doesn't understand Paul's words. I do understand. If Paul's he did. Words. He wouldn't have went to Romans chapter eleven. Mm -hmm. uh, Romans verse one. Hold on. Verse one. In verse verse one. It says, "I say then, have God cast away His people? Who is God's people? Israel. Israel. So this context is speaking about who? No, it's not Israel. about Israel. Listen Israel. to what He says. Now I'm, I'm reading the. You, hold on, David. Hold on, David. We we reading the we reading the first verse. This is the context. It says, God forbid, for I also am an Israelite mm -hmm. of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. So what kind and, and like you said, we're going on context. Mm -hmm. How is this speaking about other nations? Well, Paul is that. telling you this is talking about the Israelites. Because you keep reading. Why will Paul be why will Paul be writing to another nation about things that pertain unto the children of Israel? Uh, make that uh, make sense. Absolutely. He says in verse 11, so I ask, did they stumble? They, the pronoun refers to Israel, in order that they might fall by no means. Rather, through their, through Israel's trespass, salvation has come to the Gentiles, so as to make them. Israel jealous. Now, if their trespasses means riches for the world, and if their failure means riches for the Gentiles, that is Israel's failure, how much more will their full inclusion mean? Now I am speaking to you Gentiles in so much then as I am an apostle to the Ephraim, Gentiles. 
he from going to that word Gentiles because he still don't understand. And he it's not Israel because he he says Israel is jealous over the Gentiles. Israel is not jealous over itself. Can, can we prove that? Ethnos <laughs> means nation. No, I'm okay. That can we prove that the um, that Israel was going to be jealous of itself? I'm gonna let you go, Yashwan, but I want to prove that real quick. Uh. And why would Israel need to reject in order for salvation to come to Israel, for for them to be reconciled? That makes no well, sense to we, say we Israel already to reject in order. We for already Israel. explained that to you. The Gentiles are the Israelites and that took on the customs. Well, even the, even the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary disagrees with you on that. The con right. Even it the Compact it. Bible Dictionary uh, says that. It. It the word Gentile usually, usually, what is the word usually Most mean? of the time Most means non-Israel. Okay, stop right, stop right there. Most of the, I mean, this, I mean, he just cut himself. Like, no, I cut times. you because it says most, <laughs> you're trying to say it Damn. almost always means Israelite. <laughs> it's saying it almost never means I didn't Israelite. say, hold on, David. I didn't say it always means Israelites almost, from the beginning. Always. You said that it don't mean, you said that it means the other nations. Yes, it that's does. what you said, and you that's said what that that's Zonner only what it means. I've got it you right said, here. Let me read hold it. Hold on, hold on. You said that the word Gentile only means the other nations. Yeah, well, because if you look in, in the in but wait a minute, hold on. See, that's what I'm saying. That's a contradiction. No, it's so not. does it does the word Gentile says. does the word Gentile only mean another nation? No, because or the, if like you it said, does really it usually closely, if you look really closely? It brackets other translations of ethnos. Yeah, you see, he, he don't and get so it. He don't Gentile, understand. Gentile just period means nation. That's no, all it ethnos means. Ethnos means nation. Gentile is a technical term that means Well, that's the word that we're looking at right now. It says Gentile ethnos. means non-Israelite. <laughs> ethnos ethnos means ethnos. nation Gentile. Hey, Gentile. Hey, Cap, Strong's G, 1484. <laughs> Hey, Cap, go, go ahead, because he that's he nice. don't understand. He he have not you understand. Got, have any of you ever studied Greek at all? Yes, we do study Greek. David. No, have you actually uh, no, taken no. any classes? Do you have any Greek grammars? Hey, yes. you, you see that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh man. Okay. David, what hey, well, let, what let, books? Just, what yeah. what books do you have on Greek? David. Hey, don't worry. We'll we'll bring that on in the next discussion. Okay. Yeah, it's, let's bring that on. Uh, adding that in there. And that's just bad Bible, sir. Did Gentile does not mean non-Israelite. Gentile means non-Israelite. No, yeah. it does. It just no means nation, nation can mean an Israelite. Gentile <laughs> means non-Israelite. Gentile is a translation. They, they, no, because Israelite yes. Gentiles. So Gentile is a translation into English. Well, in English, time, we well, say Gentile. When we say Gentile, the translators it, use that again, word to refer to non-Israelites. Does not mean non-Israelite. You have to stop saying that. This is why you're getting cut for the last two and a half <laughs> hours. You got to stop. Okay. So you're saying, okay. Go to your combat Bible dictionary, and it's going to say usually, but it doesn't mean always. You're what does usually always. mean? Let's just go with it. What does usually mean? 70% of the time. Okay. Again, so let's, David, ki let's continue David, reading and see what it says. David, you're pushing Gentiles being non-Israelites to push your theology. No, I'm that. not. That's what the English word means. No, it doesn't the mean The English that. word Gentile means Gentile not Israelite. means nation. No. That's it's no, ethnos means is, nation and is a technical term ethnos, is historically used in not just the Bible, but in Jewish literature you know, of the time that Israelite, is in Greek. David, we told you time and time where Israelites were called Gentiles. You, you know, you claim it. You you haven't. No, we're telling you and we've been showing you. We've been reading it. Gentile. You, you're, not, you're asserting it and your assertion is hey, wrong. I, I could prove it right now if you like. Sure. Okay, let's 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 Zondervan let's do it. a disservice by saying that. I just want to make that very clear. You're doing Zondervan a disservice by just forcing Gentiles. You're making that to make sense because that's your theology. It's no, not. it's not about my theology. It's about the meaning of the it's term in ancient times. I've never seen the word Gentile and the definition mean not Israelite. Well, look, just You're open Merriam-Webster's dictionary. <laughs> I don't, hey, let, let's a see person what, let's of see a non-Jewish nation or of a non-Jewish faith, especially. All right. All right, let's see. Let's see what he thinks about this. Okay, 
We're going to start at Jeremiah 4, and we'll, de- we'll, talk, we'll start at 5. It says, Declare ye in Judah and publish in Jerusalem, and say, Blow ye the trumpet in the land. Cry, gather together, say, and assemble yourselves. Let us go into the defense city. Set up the standard towards Zion. Retire, stay not. Let me skip to verse 7. The lion is come up from his thicket, and the destroyer, of the Gentiles is on his way. Mm-hmm. What is that talking about right there? That Gentiles. Exactly. The nations. Exactly. The, He's the, the destroyer of the nations. Ay, ay, ay. This so, one. So Gentiles you, means nations, right? This one is Goy, and it's talking about non Hebrew people. Exactly. Everybody else other than Israel. Exactly. They're going to be destroyed. OMG. The nations are going to be destroyed. Is every single person in the nations going to be destroyed? No. But go into Revelation chapter 19 and you see they assemble for battle and they're wiped out. Absolutely. Okay. So they got- <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, this, this is crazy. I'm- okay. Hey, let's, let's. Scholar, just make Gentiles mean non-Israelites. Every reputable biblical scholar will tell you Gentile just means nation. It doesn't. <laughs> no, Ethnos means nation. Service, sir, Eth- on the, nerd, the name Gentile. That's bad Eth- Bible, and you need to repent. No, <laughs> I. Hey, he can't find. He, hey, he don't have no can, place of repentance. Hey, can we ask you a question though, seriously, right? Since you believe that, um that you obviously agree that there is going to be a ruling class citizen in the kingdom, right? Cause you brought mm-hmm. up the, you brought up the, um, the, the 12 apostles, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Beautiful. So now Gentiles, you said the law is going to re reestablish Israelites, right? Uh, y- yes. He's going to reestablish the nation of Israel, right? According yes. to the book of Acts first chapter, right? Yep. You identified that, right? Mm-hmm. And my brother, he so beautifully went to to some um what was that? What was he just that in Psalms uh two and eight? Right. Can we go uh, back there for a second? Right? What did, what did it uh, say right there, right? It it, yes. said, it says, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, right? And the uttermost parts of the earth. Hold on, go go back up there, right there, right to the utmost parts of the earth. Now, can you go back to that Acts chapter one real quick? I just want to see some. Acts chapter one, verse seven uh, to eight. All right. So it says, uh, "But ye shall receive power. What power? The same power we were just talking about." in a book of um, uh, Psalms there, right? Because that's what the children of Israel need is power to do what? To go throughout all of these nations to preach the gospel, right? Paul was given that ability because of um, the clearance that he would have that the other apostles did not have, right? And and um, they received that great power through the Holy Spirit, right? To be able to come under one roof you understand to speak in one language, you understand, to, to receive that beautiful power, right? And the witnesses, it says that you shall be witnesses. You know who the witness is according to the Bible? The witnesses is those those olive those olive branches you're talking about in Romans the 11th chapter, right? When you go to a Ezekiel the 37th chapter, it perfectly breaks down that olive tree Right. And those branches becoming those branches that was broken off, um, coming back together. But what are they going to be coming back together to do? If if Gentiles are going to be given the same power as the children of Israel, right, who were never given the covenant and never given power, right, or dominion within the earth, you're doing a disservice. Like my brother said, you need to repent. Because you're doing a disservice to the Bible and the gospel within itself, right? The Bible has always been about class, right? Ruling citizenship upon the earth. It's always been a ruling class. You do the Bible disservice and because you want to fit yourself in 
a position next to Israelites. Listen, if we was not Israelites, if we never, because we, it was a time period we didn't claim to be Israelites. We claimed to be Gentiles growing up in these churches under these uh, theologies, these false theologies, right? As being Gentiles, right? Mixed up under Paul's writings. But we understand Paul. And we understand that Paul was given a certain power to go and commission throughout many scriptures and many people that you fail to realize all in the apocrypha that you disagree with, right? And we can show you an addition to the book of Romans that will also show you the clarification of um, his approval of the apocrypha writings and second edges, right? You do, you do know that, right? That Paul agreed with that writing, right? Uh, I, I mean, I, I know he quoted from it, but quoting from something doesn't mean it, he thought it was inspired because he quotes from other non-Israelite non authors too. And that doesn't mean he thinks they're inspired. Play cool. Uh, let me look it up here. Yeah, and we need that quote that you're saying Paul quoted from to show right here, right? Yeah, hold on. Um, Dang, we were supposed to stop like 45 minutes ago. Shoot, <laughs> I said an hour. An hour, an hour. <laughs> I said an hour. So, um, so, well, Titus one twelve is a quote, uh -huh. uh, a prophet of their own. Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy gluttons. Um, uh, so Acts 17, 28, some of your own poets have said, for we also are his children. Um, can you show the reference of that in the Apocrypha? It's not in the Apocrypha. It's a, well, that's um, what I was, you just said Paul quoted from the, uh, and used Apocrypha writings. Uh, well, so trying to think in Paul. I know Hebrews chapter one, verse three specifically has allusions to the uh, wisdom literature. Mm -hmm. Sirach one, four, maybe I, I haven't looked at it in years though. Um, mm -hmm. So there's different, <clears throat> there's different ones in different places, but I mean, it's, it's definitely there. Right. So that's why, that's probably why you don't uh, subscribe to the Apocrypha is because you can't identify any writings to mirror what you already uh, receive, you know, through your, your years of study. Oh, no, it's not that. I just, I think God, in, as Paul says in Romans 3, that the, the oracles of God were entrusted to the Jews. And yeah. I don't believe the so, evidence shows that the, the, the Jews um, ended up holding that as inspired work. Um, you know, if you... Uh, no, 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 not the Jews. You, you, you're going into like you brought up Protestants, right? Mm -hmm. So, you, yeah, you, you're going into different time periods. So, you, are, what about Dead Sea Scrolls? Are those uh, should those be added into the to the books? No, I no, okay. I don't. I well, so I, what? What? It, how do we determine canon? I don't think it's. it's well, no, simply I, I was just. I, it's not what I determine. I just want to know what you feel to be yeah. uh, inspired writings. At this I, point, no, I, I think the, the from from a New Testament perspective, I think it's pretty well established uh, and has been for many hundreds of years, over a thousand years mm -hmm. plus. Um, we look even in the early church and we see general agreement in community acceptance of what we have today. Um, and then in terms of the Old Testament, well, again, that's where I defer back to the Jewish canon and how that's right. Been. So, so do we throw away the the whole Maccabean writings because you don't agree with it? No, it's not, it's not, I just don't. I, it's not that I don't uh, agree or disagree. Right. It's that I just don't believe it's inspired because I believe if it was inspired and intended to be part of the canon, then it would be a part of the Jewish canon because that's who but, God entrusted with it, and He would be right. that. Way. But, go ahead, go ahead, Cap. Yeah. By, by the Jewish canon, though. Why why would why would Christ be keeping the feast of dedication? He was a Jew. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so the, I don't know. 
the writings of the Feast of Dedication is found in the Maccabees, correct? Yes. I, again, I believe it is a historically valuable book. And, and I believe <laughs> Jesus felt it was too. But we cannot disregard what Paul says. Who was entrusted with the oracles of God? What, what, you just what, said what, the Jews, what, right? And did the what, Jews accept it as canon? No. Did yeah, because 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 Judas Maccabees was was a priest, so everything that that he did would have been canon. What are you no, talking about? No, there's what, books what? referenced in the Bible in, in the book of uh, we were talking about it earlier. It was either in the Kings or the or Chronicles that references other books that existed at the time. That doesn't doesn't mean they're part of the canon. They're not preserved. How do we, we have to books? have criteria, objective criteria? by which we determine canon. We can't just talk, say, well, are, I love are you this. Talk, are you talking about First Chronicles 29, 29? I, I, I don't remember. I'm off the top of my head. I just, there may I mean, be. I'm just, I'm just asking because you keep speaking of these other books. That's all. I, no, that well, yeah, there's, there's reference to bo other books that we do not have anymore. Given Boy, by you the speak, you keep You're going into Chronicles, so is that what you're talking about? Uh, so you said First Chronicles 29, 29? On the screen. Uh no. No, um uh, so I um like the book of the something with the kings or something like that. These different books that are referenced that record different That's histories. first that's first chronicles twenty nine twenty nine. Right, yeah. First Chronicles twenty nine twenty nine. Is that what you're talking about? No, that's not what I was referring to. So what books are you talking about? Uh hold on, let me see if I can look it up. Um I know is it there's the ones that talk about the chronicles of the kings. Yes. Or it says in the books of the king, but that's talking about chronicles. No, there there's other books that are referenced that we, we don't have so, preserved. So, I, I know what he's talking about. So it's getting late though, y'all. I'm I, I am getting tired. Yeah, that's cool, man. Uh you know, we just we just wanted to see a couple stances on you, man, and um yeah, man, the bro hey, hey, Captain Ram said you you gotta repent, man, because you you done messed up the Bible. Man. Gotta, hey, David, man, you gotta face the east. You <laughs> put sackcloth on your head, my friend, and you gotta repent for what you said about that. <laughs> <laughs> repent for what I said about what? Are you cut out of it? About about the definition of Gentiles, always meaning non-Israelite. <laughs> Bad I don't. I haven't seen a, a place where I think it means an Israelite. If you <laughs> convince me of a place, I'll change my mind. But we, I, we, you saying you. it means it here's, doesn't make me agree. Here's, here's the thing: we've shown you, but you can't show. <clears> you. I don't agree, out. and the oh, Greek no, lexicons no. don't agree. The translators the don't agree. The, the lexicon has never said that it always means a non-Israelite. No, but if we look at the glosses of those texts and how they're defining it in those texts. They they don't agree is what I'm saying. Okay, so yeah. I got a I got a few precepts. I got a few scriptures that I can show you for another time where I can go through every word of Gentile, whether it be Helen, Hellenistes, Ethnos, Goy, uh, so forth and so forth, and I can show you Israelites being referred to by each and every one of those words. So um, you probably want to look at that and just just double check. Because I'm going to come with it. I'm going to show you all those. I didn't have to say because we had a lot to cover. But um, I did want to I did want to say that because when you start saying something is absolute, you you putting your chin out there for someone like us to come and and, and give you a nice rocking to your jaw. <laughs> you got to be just to be clear. What I'm saying is I'm talking you about that English translation. I'm not saying ethnos <laughs> never refers to Israelites. No, ethnos. I'm I'm telling you, <laughs> Ethnos, Hellenistes, Helen, Goy, whatever, whatever you want to. Goy, know. yes. Ethnos, yes. Helen, I don't know. I don't think Helen we, ever we, we refers. Showed, we showed you Helen. No, you no, you asserted it. It didn't no, show it. No, <clears throat> I, we literally went to the scripture. What verse? This, this, this one we can do me, quick. Let's just let do me, it real quick. Let me go back to it. Hold on. Let me see where we got. <laughs> Was that Corinthians? All right. Uh, so, on, oh, John 7? Well, that was one of them, but John 7, 35 was one of them. I didn't agree at all. NLT. 
Matter of fact, uh, Ephraim, can you get uh, John 735 and just put it in the NLT real quick? Well, let's look at the Greek. Uh -huh. The Greek is very clear. Mm -hmm. John 7, I'm going to read it from the Greek. Uh, so it says, Aste dis uh, diasparon tone or LA known melee. So is it into the disper the dispersion among the Greeks? And then a melee is about to. And then, oh, I guess I should go to the next line. That would help. Uh, Marusathai, Kai, Didaskain, Tus, Helenes. And that's strong 1672 says from Hellas. It's from Hellas, a Helen or inhabitant of Hellas mm -hmm. by extension a Greek-speaking person, especially yes. non-Jew. So it's a Greek-speaking person. So if I spoke Greek, I would be Hellas. No, no, no. That that alone did not make somebody a... Speaking Greek alone did not make somebody a Helen. They would still be a Jew if they spoke Greek. But again, that's what we're saying. So if they're a Jew, but they speak Greek, that's Helen. No, no, they were they were not called Helens if they were Jews and spoke Greek. Again, it's by extension, a Greek speaking. Okay, person. and you're not understanding how to read the reference in the lexicon because that's not how the language was war was used. The Jewish people referred to Helens as distinct from themselves, regardless of whether or not they do spoke I'm, Greek. Like that's what I'm saying. What do you get? You you just said you made a claim. Where do you get that claim from? Which claim? I made a you couple. And that the Greeks looked at Helen and no, the Jews. At, yeah, you said the Jews looked at the, the Jews looked at Helen as what? As ones distinct from themselves. Where do you get that information from? The use of the term in scripture, in Jewish literature. Like what? I mean, you get, you get, like right now you're just telling us this. Okay. You're not showing us this. So in. And then I want to read that same scripture in the NLT. Matt, while you're looking for that, I was going to bring this out real quick. John 735 in the NLT. It says the Jewish leaders were puzzled by this statement. Where is he planning to go? They asked. Is he thinking of leaving the country and going to the Jews in other lands? Maybe he will even teach the Greeks. Mm -hmm. So, so we're talking about Christ going to go teach Jews in other lands, right? Mm -mm. And him teaching the Greeks. Hey, the GNT got a cold translation on it. Okay, but you realize that these are not very literal translations. That one, the NLT, I think was great. He was he going to the Jews in other lands? Maybe he will even <laughs> teach the Greeks. Exactly. That's the Jews and the Greeks. That's two groups. But, I, that's what's again, being Greek. spoken of in the text. David, David, I don't think you understand. Greek is not a, a ethnicity. Greek is a citizenship. They dis, The Jewish people consistently, and we see this in scripture, you see Jew and Greek. It's not about what right. language they were speaking. Okay, so so when and this is the part that's frustrating because when you guys say Jew and Greek, no no one thinks about it and says, "Am I a Jew or am I a Greek?" Right? And, and you guys make this about all people getting salvation, and I only see two subjects. I see Jew and Greek. Well, what about the other nations? Colossians three eleven: Jew, Greek, barbarian, <laughs> Scythian. Right. That only that only uh, a Jew and a Greek. Where's Ham? Where's Moab? Where's Edom? Where's uh, so, uh, so, so, so Lakia, Where's the the Northern Kingdom? But Jews about, only from the Southern Kingdom. No, no. By the first century, everyone was called a Jew. There was no distinction. No, you can look at, can look at any Bible dictionary. Look, in, <laughs> look up Jew in oh any Bible dictionary, so, and it'll tell Jew? you that. What does Jew mean? Originally, it meant the tribe of Judah. Then it meant the Southern Kingdom. Then 
So after when, the exile, it after because what, what what exile? The Babylonian exile and Assyrian so, captivity. So wait, those are two different captivities. So yes, but they still ended, and the people integrated together. No, they didn't. Mm -hmm. I, well, then why do we have uh, yeah. a not a, a northern wait, kingdom person in 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 Luke chapter two? Wait a minute. You're saying that after the Assyrian captivity, the northern kingdom integrated with the southern kingdom? There were people. Well, there were some people. Yeah. So the Samaritan woman was she a northern kingdom Israelite or a she, southern kingdom? She Israelite? probably wasn't an Israelite at all. Oh wow! Yeah, hey, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We, we can't cut him on that too right now. It's too David, many, too many. David, my question was: Was the Samaritan woman a Northern Kingdom Israelite or a Southern Kingdom Israelite? And you said she probably wasn't an Israelite. Yep. Cap, we, okay. we got to leave his head on. We got to save it for Hold the Hold on. Let me read it. Let me read it right here. And the king of Assyria, 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 24. Oh, man. And the oh, king man. of Assyria bought, brought people from Babylon, Kudha, Ava, Hamath, and Sepharvaim, and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead Where are you of at? the people of Israel. Where are you at? And they took possession. 2 Hold Kings on. chapter 17, 30, 24. And they took possession of Samaria and lived in its cities. Okay, so this is okay. So, so what's the point? By a diverse range of people were resettled into Samaria, and were these were these Southern Kingdom Israelites? They were not Israelites. Okay, these were these were heathen, correct? Yes. Okay, so what's your point in coming here? What are you so, trying? So, so people in Samaria. Ha, there were a massive influx of non-Israelites into Samaria. So, okay. so you tell me. So you telling me you trying to use that scripture to refer to John <laughs> chapter four? Because well, if you are, that's horrible. That, that's a horrible. Are you coming here? Are you saying that the the, the North the Samaritan woman was from one of these? <laughs> well, because what ends up happening? The people are forced to, to are, are taught the laws of Israel. And but they mix in their pagan practices with them, and yeah. over time, yeah. though, they, they it says they do not fear the Lord or follow his, his commandments, and then somebody is sent in to teach them, and all these other things happen. Yes, hey, David, yeah. repent, David. <laughs> hey, listen, hey, hey y'all, want... watch this. Were those southern kingdom priests or northern kingdom priests that went to go teach those nations? Mm, mm, mm. Uh, that I don't recall. <laughs> they would, they would, they would, have, they would have really belonged to a kingdom. They would have been in the kingdom. No, no. What I'm saying is, who taught those other nations how to keep some sort of a priesthood in the northern kingdom? Right. It says in verse 28. So one of the priests whom they had carried away from Samaria came and lived in Bethel and taught them how they should fear the Lord. Are those northern wow. kingdoms? Or southern kingdom priests. Well, he'd been carried away where, from Samaria, so he would have been a northern in the northern kingdom. Okay, so these were not Jews, correct? Well, the priest was the people no, who were resettled. No, right. <laughs> listen, listen hey. David, the priest got the southern kingdom Levites got kicked out. You had North <laughs> Kingdom that was practicing Samaritanism, and they came over there and was teaching from the Samaritan Pentateuch on how to just uh, on how to just keep the laws of Moses. What okay, the, the the northern kingdom had gone into exile, and the king of Assyria brought people to Samaria and they he took brought, possession. He, yeah, no, no, the no, the, no, 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 the Assyrian king kicked out the southern kingdom Levites. Mm -hmm. You don't see Levites in here. Okay, listen again to what the text says. And, okay. and my question is, are these were these Levitical priests or were they not? I don't think he understands the difference, bro. No, what I'm trying to say <clears throat> is that Israelites, there was a Syrian captivity that the northern kingdom went into, right? Do we agree mm -hmm. there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. When they went in there, then the king of Assyria brought people from all these different places and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the people of Israel and they took possession of Samaria and lived in its cities. So like he trying to use that 
we hey Rom, he trying to use that to say that the woman in John chapter four is a heathen and not an Israelite because no. What I'm saying oh. is she's a, she became a Samaritan over time, just like even what? Josephus talks about Edomites becoming wow. Jews. <laughs> he, oh, don't, he, don't, he don't know what's going on. I, hey, and, this, is, and this is the first century Jewish writer, hey, the historian. You said who? Writing. Who? Wow. Josephus, a first century Jewish historian. You got his book? Yeah. Okay. So, so, so you you believe in all of Josephus is right? No, but there's no reason for me to doubt him historically. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. He's uh, not you just inspired. Said the exact so same thing not. about Josephus that you said about the apocrypha. Right, exactly. You don't exactly. believe you Josephus. See how you kill that. You don't believe Josephus, but you won't believe the apocrypha. No, either. that's not what I said. That's I said exactly I don't consider Josephus. either one of them inspired, but they are both <laughs> valuable historically. So you believe that Edomites can become Jews now? Well, again, if we look at how the concepts were understood at that Where, time, Richard. rather than this modern 20th century perspective you all take, then yes. <laughs> but you guys don't know historically how these things worked in they, ancient times because you haven't studied oh, the literature. You haven't studied the Dead Sea Scrolls, oh. Josephus, Philo. Who ain't studied? Who ain't? Oh, hold on. Wait, wait. Don't do that. Don't be disrespectful, man. Well, you, oh. you you act you don't know what I'm talking about no, no, when no, I give no, this no, reference. No, so no, I'm not no, being no, 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 You don't know what you're talking about. Well, well, yeah, Apparently, we're gonna be said, sharing the kingdom you, with you. Edomite. Said, you said we haven't studied uh Philo, Josephus, the Dead Sea Scrolls, and all these other books. Don't do that. Well, all right. I apologize. You're right. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Because I, I was gonna say, man, I could just I could just reach down right here and show you uh, <laughs> you, you know. Hey, listen, listen. The fact is, he that is what he says. Until, they were considered to be Jews until uh, until Edom starts showing his colors. Man, this is messed up. We we were very we was very respectful with you, man. We we didn't disrespect you, and, and the first the first disrespectful uh, uh, ad hom came from your side. Why? You why? Call me an Edomite. <laughs> But hold on, hold on. What's wrong with that? If East African confused, what's because I know what you mean by it. That's what's wrong with it. What's wrong with being called an Edomite? Because that means, depending upon your particular view, either I'm going into destruction or I'm it going should, into slavery. So matter. I take it as an insult. David, it shouldn't matter if you believe that Edomites are Jews now. No, I no, believe. No. I, I believe. I'm talking about what you mean by it, not what I mean it, by it. Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what what I believe. No, but you meant it as an insult, as a dig. So no, no, no. That's okay. what I identify. Hey. As. It's not okay. Hey, hey it Dave, was in a heated moment. Hey, no, Dave, can I ask not, you one question, real quick. What I'm sure, saying. this will be the last question, guys. Hey, Cap, real quick. Hold on, Cap. Hey, hey, Dave. Can I ask you one quick question? Have you ever heard this right here? What's up? All right, cool. <laughs> what is this? What do you think about that, David? I, honestly, I had trouble hearing a lot of it. Hey, pull it up on the screen with her phone, man. If I... I'm gonna eat them. Uh, send send it to me real quick. I'll pull it up. You. And you know it is. And and David, you know it is, right? You know it, you you know it, you know it, David. That I'm an Edomite? <laughs> yeah. You know, I have no reason to think I'm an Edomite. I'm sorry. Hey man, you read and hairy, man. That's why you just that's why you went, that's why you wanted to show on Josephus. You went to numbers 15. You want to you want you want to show that 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 Edomites that even in the book of Obadiah you know that that Edomites you know the destruction was for a little while the Lord gonna lay off the steam and he gonna let Edomites on the team and they gonna be skipping on the on the on the gold <laughs> streets of Jerusalem, right? It's not about I, I. I say it not about me. I say it because I'm genuinely concerned because I I truly believe you guys are preaching a false gospel, right? And, and, and I want to show that 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 why that's the case because right. I believe you know I want to see everyone saved. 
And wow. And so that's that's why. So, you want to see everyone say <laughs> I mean, I know it's not gonna happen. <laughs> well, oh wow, whoa. Hey, no, 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 no. I got a question, man. What is the hey. That I'm gonna get up. No. <laughs> Hold on, play this. All right, one. let's see this. <laughs> hey, that kind of looks like Dave, right? Now. Right, right. That's why I did it. I thought I was safe through faith. <laughs> oh man, this is crazy, man. Damn. That's my song, dude. That's my song, dude. That's my song. That's my song. Christ will not be my flesh. Hey Dave, hey, hey, hey Dave, and, and with and with that, you know we say some love. Yeah, hey, listen. <laughs> hey, we we just want Dave, why you want everybody to be saved in Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ wants wants all his little children to reign in the kingdom of heaven. And that's the children of Israel, uh, Dave, right? All Nate, you already agreed that if the Israelites never fell, that they would be on top of all the nations. So you have to agree at the end of the day that wherever there's some Israelites at somewhere, Dave, you should be, you should be going above and beyond using your top. The, I'm quite sure you went to a real good school, Dave. Right? Oh, I did. Did you graduate college? No. No? Okay. Well, I mean, what you said you I got a good job though. I you got, got a good job. job. Well, I mean, you went you had to go to a good high school though. Hmm. You know, they put us way at the bottom. You know, all I'm saying, Dave. You know, we the meek. They put us way at the bottom. You feel me? So I think we need our blessing, Dave. All, all I'm saying is is that I don't I think it's a disservice. And somebody need to repent. And you gotta find Israel. <laughs> You so, gotta find this world. You should I be show you my nephew in the other room. You what like, you mean, Sean? What what about him? Because you say, look at him, say he's an Israelite. <laughs> he's an Israelite. That's what you'd say. Yeah. Oh, he's oh what he's black. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Hey, look, you know, somewhere, so somewhere I I pe yeah, you know, some somewhere they, you know, um the the your your people always got a black brother somewhere in the world, <laughs> man. Yeah. <laughs> we 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 keep gotta keep somebody somewhere around just in case. Yeah, hey, 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 that's that clean right there. You know you safe. You safe with that that spirit. That's why y'all always say I got one. I got one black friend. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it was good talking to you, man. No, right, right. Yeah, cool. I, even we disagree. I still like y'all. Yeah, hey, come back, man. We'll try to set something up next time. Be a little different, um, you know. Yeah, man. We'll we'll, we'll release the, uh, the 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 brothers on you next time, man, and 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 bring oh, your man. top doctrine. Go ahead, Cap. No, I'm 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 good. I was just uh, a lot of questions I didn't get answered, but um, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I could tell. I mean, Dave, man, you kind of you kind of stiff neck. Well, I can tell, man. We're going to turn you into a good servant, man. I can tell, man. Hey, look. You, you stiff neck right now, but I can tell, man. You're going to be cleaving hard soon. You're going to be cleaving hard real soon. Hey, so, Dave, you know, oh, like, just that avoid, you know, like the plague, but, you know, that's 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 to be ex expected. But, you know, other than that, it's a good dialogue. Um. But you gotta repent, man. You gotta repent, Dave. That's that's all I'm gonna say, man. Don't don't do the word Gentiles like that. Sure. All right. we'll, we'll talk about it some more. All right. All right, Dave. Hey, Dave, have a good hey, hey, Dave, let me ask a question, Dave. Do you do you do you teach on the streets? On the streets? No, I do teach at uh in a children's ministry though. Oh, okay. All right. Well, why uh, you ask? 
No, I just wanted to know. Um, you know, a lot of times people that 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 want to you know talk the Bible, you know, they don't put their they they they're afraid to go on the streets because it's 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 not as conducive. It's not like an echo chamber um, as a church building. So you go to a church mm. building, everybody can agree with the minister, but. See, what we do is we actually go on the streets and we put the doctrine on the line. Um, so yeah. that's just something that, uh, you know, I just want to know. Uh, but other than that, that's that's all I got. Oh, yeah. I, well, I used to. So you want to go way back. So I used to be a Jehovah's Witness. So I used to go door to door. So damn. So I know, I, I, <laughs> I know about talking to people a little bit. <laughs> right. right. Hey, hey why, why, why does the 144,000 on the Jehovah's Witnesses, why are they always Caucasian? Because the leadership is almost always Caucasian. I mean, there's been a, like one, maybe two exceptions, but mm. I mean, it, yeah, they're they're Caucasian. The majority of witnesses historically have been Caucasian, though I think that's changed somewhat. I don't know. I mean, but yeah, I mean, I left for a reason. Was hey, that- Dave, can I ask you real, real quick? I know this is probably... Who are the Edomites, Dave? Mm. I believe that the Edomites are just a, a group of people that were largely wiped out. And Damn. You know, there's traces of them around, I'm sure. White, but white, white out? I don't think they're specifically white because the... I mean, oh, we, you said they were white out. Wiped, like killed. Wiped yeah, so you so if I'm not mistaken, I don't want to misrepresent you. Do you do you think that um the book of Obadiah already happened to the Edomites? Yeah, I think that happened with like in the Maccabean period and you know basically the second century BC kind of time frame. Hey, right. I, I got a precept for you on why uh the Jehovah's Wit- Witless Witnesses uh are uh here I'll pull it up for you real quick. It's the uh Maccabees uh chapter three, first Maccabees chapter three and verse 48, it says, and laid open the book of the law wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. Mm. Mm. And that is why Jehovah's Witnesses are uh Dave, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, same. All right, y'all have a blessed night. We can do this again. Absolutely, we will. All right, right, Dave. Take it easy, man. Take it easy. See you.